Um, I The year is 1016 of the Second Era. 21 years ago in the East, in Aleros, the Amber League defeated the last remnants of the old Alaran Empire and claimed the Throne of Glass, establishing itself as the reigning... I'm going to move this to the front of the screen. It's establishing itself as the reigning great power of Aleros. 11 years ago, the Lords of the Coast in Eastern Ankaria united under the Maroon Banner. Now, instead of warring with one another, they, they, they spread their collective influence across the seas, seeking profit, power. And to the west in Narrakesh, the Krivan dynasty signed their final peace with the Sultan of Olmosir, ending cent a centuries-long Cold War. Only Dolos remains under arms, the faltering Fifth Crusade still trudging along despite the loss of a dozen armies. For the first time since the collapse, the world is, more or less, at peace. Peace is only an illusion. For while the great powers may have laid their weapons aside for now, the lands between their realms are far from stable. We find ourselves in one such land, a strategically located island chain sitting almost perfectly between the lands of Dolos, Incaria, and Aleros. For, with favorable winds allowing travel in either direction, in the days before the collapse, a Triton kingdom ruled these waters. They called themselves the Tanajat, but to the rest of the world, they were the kingdom of the crossroads. More than 5,000 islands make up this twisted maze of keys and atolls that stretches from north to south for 500 leagues, straddling the equator and teeming with life. First rediscovered by the civilized world in the year 656 of the Second Era by the Incarian explorer Zandis Gardir, these islands now collectively bear his name. Gardir's ships, ships, his ships, his ships took refuge in, from the summer monsoons on the largest island of the archipelago, and the settlement they built, built has grown into the relatively uncreatively named city of Gerdan, the largest city for 2,000 miles in any direction. A few strong-willed souls trace their ancestry back to these first explorers, though most of those who inhabit these lands are either more recent arrivals, seeking to capitalize on the bounties these emerald shores bring, or those who were here all along, struggling to survive the aftermath of the collapse in isolation. The news of Gerdia's discovery brought great interest to the islands. For a time, a voyage was seen as a sort of rite of passage. Any sailor worth their salt could, could own. No explorer worth their salt could claim aim such unless they had visited Gerdia. In time, the native peoples were displaced, brushed aside by those better armed and organized, and the four islands of prominence, Gerdia, Durinshard, Summercrest, and Castor, each grew their own unique cultures. On Gerdan, human colonists, largely from Alero, supplanted the first elven conquerors and fought the native lizard folk in Yuan-Ti deep into the jungle. They carved out a chain of communities on the westward plains and, and into the mountains of the eastern crest. To the south, the Isle of Castor was first resettled by merchants from Dolos. Built solely for profit, its jungles were cut 
its land furrowed, and its people placed in binds. To the west, the Grey Dwarves under Durham Kahan and found a new home alongside the native Tabaxi clans on the island they came to call Durham Shard. While the Tabaxi live on the surface, the Dwarves carved their nation out of the mountains, and for two centuries have co they have coexisted peacefully. Sitting 30 leagues north of Durham Shard lies Summercrest Isle. Settled by the Incarian Elves shortly after the, the founding of Gurdan, the native lizard folk were forced to flee their religious crusade or die upon the sword. For centuries now, the four islands of the Inner Archipelago have comp competed for supremacy on the land and waves, with no true victor emerging. But the winds never stay the course for long. Change is coming. The maroon banner flies from the forts of, for of, for uh, the forts of Synovus, while the orange and white ensign of the Amber League dots new, fast ships sailing westward. In the many uninhabited... What the fuck just happened to the screen? Someone pinged. In the many uninhabited coves of, of the outlying islands, pirates lurk, seeking their fortune in the holds of unsuspecting merchants and the pockets of unfortunate passengers. The crossroads are teeming with life above and below the waves, but no single force has held sway across the breadth of the archipelago since the last Triton King millennia ago. Seemingly endless opportunities exist for those who are strong and wise enough to navigate these waters. But the ocean is seldom amenable to relinquishing its secrets. And dark forces are creeping in from the cold depths and untamed jungles. The future of the Gurdari Archipelago is yet unknown. But for a weary pack of travelers run afoul of the law, the first chapter begins to the sound of dripping water in the dungeons. Beneath the guard barracks. Where the fuck is it? Be on the island of. in the city of Port Castor. Where the fuck is my atmosphere? Oh. Ooh, water. Atmosphere. I don't understand. Spongebob reference. No, the fact that I have 356 megabit per second download speed, but yet has over a whole second of ping. Have you tried turning it off and back on again? Well, I didn't want to because I was listening to Exile. Look, luckily in this circumstance, Todd, I don't think Todd, it's Todd, see if you can change the game to like Dungeons and Dragons. I made you a mod. I can't figure it out. Well, the seven of you had an interesting night before, the day before. All of you arrived in the in the city of Port Castor from your separate port, uh, points of in, your separate origins. Within the, you had all left on different days. You had arrived at the same evening on the twenty seventh. Today, it's a little past noon. Oh. First <sighs> summer seat. Summer's end. Last month of summer, and the beginning of the worst of the storm season for the islands. All of you were rounded up by the police for various different reasons the night before. There were some events you remember, some you certainly don't. But you appear to have been left to your own devices in the cell, maybe 20 feet to 20 feet by 10 feet. It's surprisingly spacious. spacious. But there's only two benches and a hole in the corner whatever purpose you determine. And for now, relatively silent. Thorin, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Maybe uh, someone else would like to introduce themselves. You, are all, you all find yourselves in the same room, kind of coming to. There is a Rather beautiful looking, but tired and definitely hung over or elf, Eladrin even, laying on the corn in the corner, still passed out, but the rest of you are coming too at this time. Has anyone got a marker? Uh oh, I piloting this on the universe. What uh. is this custom you thought speak of? It's 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 some type of uh, like encapsulated feather with ink. I have a set of chalk in my belongings, but unfortunately, I uh, do not have access to them. Yeah, that is a good point. All of you are currently wearing none of your own shit. You are wearing basically just sackcloths that go down to your knees. Just 
very threadbare and very... Uh, my shackles seem to be blocking my magic a little. You have a separate collar around your neck. In fact, all the casters in the party. So, do. Where, so where are we? You, well, looking around the room, you find yourself in a rather damp subterranean jail cell. There is no external lights. The only light coming into the room is from what appears to be two grates in the ceiling with a little bit of torchlight trickling in from above. That ends the Barred door to the hallway does have some lighting, though it's off With the, the side in the corner. Field of Man, view. we must have been caught trying to cross some border or something heinous like that. You're finally awake. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are no, awake. yes, I see our horned friend is finally awakened. Uh, hey, what you got against horns? What do they see, Nico? So. How about you uh, describe yourself for us? I want to get. That I'm out a. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I just I want to get these in for the stream and for the record. So. Well, uh, at first glance, Turbius Steelhoof is eight foot four. Somewhat uh black and scruffy hair with some uh, highlights and silvery spots in him. His muscles in. Bicep areas is more uh, softly ashen gray with more of a darker grayer appearance, but not older. That's the command. Mm -hmm. so is he even able to fit in this room or is he like crowded? The ceilings in this room are actually surprisingly tall. They're nearly enough 10 foot ceilings. So he isn't having any issue. The doorway itself is a bit shorter. If he was a uh, Goliath, he might have a little problem, but they're roughly the same size. They're roughly the same size. Now, all of you <laughs> certainly fit within the room pretty well, but you don't really feel pleased at being here. I feel like these bonds are too weak. Do you want to try and break the break your manacles? I will try hands are all to. Bound. Your, your hands are all manacle, but they're bound in front of you. So you have some manipulation still. I will try to break my bonds. Okay. Uh, make me Give me a strength check. Do I click for a strength check? You literally click on the STR above your plus four oh. front page. Okay. Yes, a normal roll. Well, you go... You pull as hard as you can, but you get the distinct impression that these are some... Looking over them, you do notice that your shackles in particular are significantly larger and sturdier looking than those of the others. Though, those, though the ones on the Dragonborns both also look pretty robust. You get the feeling that they're used to dealing with uh, particularly right. strong individuals here. I don't uh, believe. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I... Can I get a description of how long the chain is and if it's shackled to the ground and anything? You you are not tied to the ground. You have free movement around the room. You, so you the have chain, about... but the chain's not looped through like a like a like a loop by shackle. You know what I mean? At all? So basically, it's closed manacles on your side, and then you've got about eight inches of chain between your hands. So you've got like this. So I've got nothing to leverage it off of. No protruding stones or anything. No, the room is the stonework is not amazing, but there's definitely nothing sturdy enough. It's in fairly here. flush. Yeah. The only the only thing you could conceivably use would be the edge of the bench, but it too doesn't exactly look to be put together particularly well. And as, uh, as you sit on it, it definitely sags a little bit under the weight of all of you already. You think um, coins can take a? Hold on, what's the bench made out of? Wood. What if we broke the bench and uh, used a piece of wood to leverage the chain to try and break it out of the wall? Uh, I'll introduce my character that? next, if you'd like. Please, start, please, if you're going to be making a roll like that, please message me first so I know what the hell you're trying to do. Don't just roll out of turn for no reason. I, I'm giving you guys time to talk for a little bit before we go. 
the stage. That's basically what's happening. Oh, I, I thought we were still doing character introdu introduction. That, that is exactly it. So we've seen oh, okay. Curious, but how about you? You've been speaking quite a bit. Why don't you introduce yourself, Balgoris Tanish? Um, I look over at the Minotaur as he's trying to break his vines, and, and I say, I do not believe you should attempt an escape right now, my friend. Your sentence might just become harsher. And everyone looks into the room and sees this moderately muscular, pretty well fit. Those who could recognize his heritage would notice he's a not a young looking dragonborn. He's a fairly set in his late his adult life. Uh, he stands about six feet tall. He normally seems like he'd be more accustomed to a more proper station almost but seems to be more of a low common type of person uh you do notice his eyes are a particularly blood red color um not the most uncommon uh color amongst dragonborn but usually not within those of the blue lineage um None of your personal effects are on you at the time. So yeah, no, that's that. that honestly, that's a lot of his big descriptions would be there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you, you see a dragonborn warrior of. But he is a lowborn. That's correct. However, there's a second dragonborn in the room who is distinctly different. Thorin, would you like to describe yourself? Would you give mind if I restart I'm my I'm PC? My face with a burger. Give me, give me Forky another. Scratch, would you like to describe yourself? <laughs> Eating a fucking like turkey leg. This was Man in the this was in session zero. Let's try and eat before the game. <laughs> I'm gonna be right back. That's fine. You having trouble there, Tristan? Yeah, just had to set uh, my main ox or the mic up to pick up my normal mic when I turn off the voice. Alright. So you can also leave voicemail on just set to clear. Okay, I'll do that then. That's what I'm doing. Uh Kirky Scratch. She stands about what's say what did I put down? Five four? Five five, I guess. Close enough. Uh the most striking difference about her? is her eyes are different color. One is not a normal eye color. The other one might be normal. It is fairly common for tabaxi. Indeed. The left eye is a relatively placid looking steely blue. Relatively light, but certainly normal. Your right eye, however, is peculiar. Firstly, there's no real iris or pupil or whatever the part, the white, the white part is called that I uh, can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so, uh, instead, so, uh, instead, the entire eye is gold and there's simply a ring of black around where the iris would be with a gold pupil in the middle. And not gold like just a yellowish color, but metallic, reflective almost. Like it's an artificial object. The other striking, the other difference about her is her coat color. It's more of tans and later grays than what most tabaxi in the more tropic areas are, are coated for their color. So their co coats are more keen to for camouflage and wicking in the absorption of light in the under, undergrowth when well, light does penetrate the undergrowth of dense tropics. Indeed, it is. Nico has solved the ping issue. And I see that you're at 39 milliseconds. Nico, does that mean you're back and able to talk? Yes, yes, I am. I'm trying to go down the row, Goku. I understand you're waiting. Oh, no, I'm patient as all can be. That that's as striking without her normal 
attire on that you can proceed. Next. Yarish goes. Ghost, are you able? I can Ghost? describe you if you're not able to. At this point, I'm going to assume that Ghost is... Yeah, he said you can't. say you can't. Then log trap. I can't? He can't. He can't. He's taking away the M. Okay, got it. Just when you just apply can'ts, that's <laughs> another individual in the room is a little bit different from everyone else here. A little bit shorter than all the other men at only 5'11", but relatively well built all the same. There's this handsome looking half orc male in the corner. He's been remaining relatively quiet so far, his eyes continually glancing back to the passed out elf adjacent to him. He's got the, his long black hair, or sorry, long arbored hair tied back into a ponytail that's, in, that's very tight and just pulls against the skin with a mossy green tone to the rest of it. Yep. Looks to be in his mid-twenties, perhaps, but well-scarred. Certainly one who's lived a life outdoors and it's, stop pinging, ping, hockey. It's, it, I'm sorry. I'm not pinging. Whatever you press, it keeps bringing my camera over to you. That's whenever not, someone talks. Not doing anything about my, my camera. To it. But anyway. Apologies. A little bit of a beer belly, maybe, but otherwise, mostly just a stoic individual in the corner who's seemingly not giving it in any service to the others here. The elf adjacent to him is a rather curious figure. You thought at first that it, they had left her with some sort of hat, but no. She's got these antlers that actually stick out from her head themselves properly affixed to her. Her hair is an unnatural verdant green color, bale green in particular, hair that, that runs down almost all the way to her waist. She's probably about the same height as Corky Scratch and similar build in general. Young for an elf, not really sure how old, but at least a hundred, definitely looks like an adult. It's hard to tell though. And she is very clearly wasted still. She is passed out and drooling a little bit on the floor in the corner. It's unclear what exactly she imbibed in the night before, but it's definitely not quite worn off yet. And our final would-be criminal. Take it away, Goku. So, Roxby is quite young for an adventure at 19, standing at 6 foot 2 inches with... Short, buzzed hair, silver in color, and blue eyes. Um, he basically just looks... <laughs> hey, there he is! Yep. Buff guy. Uh, he's pretty well built in the shoulders and wider in strength. However, he is keeping to himself as well and just simply seems to be speaking to himself or even praying over something. Is that the, his bottom teeth that he's showing on? It, it looks no. like you know, just, look, my lips are just. I made that picture away. with a time crunch and old AI. I did what I could. This was the best one we had. Honestly, I think it looks pretty good still. Yeah, it looks like he just has a thin bottom lip. That's all. When you say rocks B, I think of rocks D's the back. Saying some turn off pan to speakers. Oh, I didn't know there was a setting for that white one. Okay. And, uh, uh, I know Hockey understands the reference to the name, but Roxby is the uh, vocal alliteration to Roxby, the horse name that I used in Red Dead 2. The horse name. Nice. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I mean, you don't Good use horse. horse. D100. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just ride the first uh, sockless maiden out of town. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I think we forgot to introduce one person. Indeed. Are you ready, Torin? Yes. Golden Dragonborn has finished shitting in the hole in the corner. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo! Oh god. <laughs> oh, where's my we... Disgusting. He folded his wings in front. It was actually surprisingly well, like, covered in mud. Respectful. Yeah. 
I think it's pretty disrespectful to shit in public. Take the water bucket, pour it down. <laughs> Where's the fucking? You think we could get water? You did get water. There's a bucket of water. So you see a golden dragon board in the corner, standing at about six foot eight, a little bit leaner on the, a little bit leaner on the weight side for a dragon board, with sky blue eyes, and kind of has a set of wings, but they're not like full wings. They are they are they are proper wings that kind of take up a bit, a bit of your frame and kind of folded back. Well, they almost look shot. more like bird wings, but they are draconic in nature a skin-like membrane across them. For those of you who aren't versed with them, in fact, I'd say only one person here has ever seen a highborn dragon ball, and that would be Balgoris, because there are some in the dragon lands from which these individuals both hail. Less than 1% of the population still retains these traits, usually as a result of having a more... Uh, more chronologically close draconic ancestor than others, though not quite enough to have picked up a proper draconic bloodline. They are a rarity, and they are often seen with special reverence among dragon kind, though they are but the same, ultimately. Just another individual, another variation of that scaled race. And his title is Blazemaker. That is correct. We don't need to share everything. We will get to. Well, that, you, said, you said I've got my military robes on, right? So I don't have my... No, you are in very basic. You're in a prison. Oh, okay. You're in a prison of guards. Yeah. They, I just figured. We, I just figured, like that, in the time being, they wouldn't have prison guards. It'd just be whatever clothes you had on. Nah, Stripping this. They they took all your shit. <laughs> you um, let's see. What do you guys remember from last night? Last night? The events that transpired that led you into prison. How good is your memory, I wonder? Would anyone like to make a history check? I forget. I will. Mobius is not very smart in the brain. Well. Scratch, you don't know the whole story, but you definitely remember what happened with you since you were not quite partaking in the events of the, uh, the, the sacking of a certain building. Yes, you did arrive there, though. Having decided you were going to approach the Temple of Mistra to do some study and being let in as a fellow academic, you attempted to depart with several books with the full intention of returning them. However, it was not exactly easy to explain that to the guard that found you leaving and a chase ensued, which led you through a good chunk of the city. Quite a comical scene of a cat running away with an arm full of books, being chased by multiple religious uniformed guards and a very irate priest. At one point, you ran into a tavern to att in, in an attempt to escape and came in to see a naked elf dancing on a table, two two orcs in the corner beating the shit out of one another, or a couple of dragonborns and slamming more shots, and somebody apparently about to set fire in the corner of the room with a lot of chanting towards a certain Lord Karnak. Though it's not particularly clear who that was, as you attempted to flee upstairs and were ultimately cornered and forced to surrender. You were dragged off here and were one of the first to wake up, having not, uh... Protect an much alcohol. Correct. You don't but know the full story. Not before one of the guards did get a, uh... Very inquisitive, uh... Riddle said their way. He did also, um, make a man briefly lose his mental faculties. You don't know if he's recovered by now, nor do you particularly care, but... You did know it would be effective, and it certainly was, at least in neutralizing one of the guards. Unfortunately, there were quite a few. Roxby, you... Going down the list, you also rolled. Your memory is definitely memory. foggy. Your head hurts, and you're actually pretty thankful that there is very little light in this room right about now, because you know that the midday sun out here 
in this hot and humid land so unlike home. That would fucking suck right now. As you try and just let that pounding feeling in your head kind of dissipate. You're not really sure what you remember. You do remember a drinking competition. You remember... Dancing? You remember... Some sort of powder being passed around with several people partaking, though you passed on that yourself, instead smoking a green plant. It's difficult. It's a really... Hazy experience. You do remember, however, when the guards showed up and ordered people outside as a fire began to grow in the corner. You were definitely a part of the festivities and were arrested as part of it, but then they started talking about not having an access permit and calling you a filthy orc. Hitting you over the back of the head where you still have a bloody welt. Garish, you have a headache, and your entire being feels like it's going boom, boom, boom from your temples through the front of your skull. Just there is no thought. There is only pain. We can keep going, or would anyone sure do say? mine? Go ahead. Oh, make it make me the history. Oh, I thought you were rolling for us. Never mind. No, no, no. I like how you've all chosen fucking symbols, so I have no idea what's being rolled. <laughs> Die bar. <laughs> Nineteen. You have You know In your younger days you were Not that you're particularly old, but you're uh early 20s, late teens, you would remember sneaking out of the monastery to the local towns and spending some time at the taverns with a lot of your uh, peers. Leadership didn't really frown upon it too much, as long as you came back in one piece and didn't cause any damage, but let's just say you've developed a certain tolerance for alcohol, as well as certain events may have changed how your body deals with things that are poison. As it is, you remember quite a bit of last night. You remember Torin starting the chant against Lord Karnak when men of his showed up to try and throw them out. Uh. You remember the goblin that was thrown through the front window and whose body you did see bleeding on the ground when you were finally hauled out of there, several guards holding you down, even though you did cooperate in the end and ultimately not spend too... not really resist arrest. It was a good night. You won the drinking competition. You look over at what two of your defeated uh, teammates, the orc and the half orc, and chuckle a little bit as one of them definitely appears to be having the worst morning in a while. But as to why you were all arrested, well, the fire started after you guys were all hauled outside. That's what you remember. Things changed. They're sorry. Heavy footsteps are heard descending towards you. You vaguely remember outside this door and over to the right, there's a spiral staircase leading the way down towards this subterranean prison lair. The footsteps continue until you get the sense there's someone right on the other side of the door. They're just out of frame. You hear the voice go, these are the new ones. Yeah, managed to piss off Lord in a hurry. Wouldn't be hard to get him moving. What? Oh. Right. Of course. He watches another figure steps into frame, fully filling the doorway, hulking and muscular, its head having to bow down, even in the tall ceilings of the hallway. You see the form of the largest minotaur you have ever seen in your life. His face is battered and scarred, a deep chestnut brown with ripped sections, with very little actual fur along most of his nose, having long since been 
completely abraded away. Hey, he's easily at least 10 feet tall. Even Turbius has only seen a couple of Minotaurs that have reached sizes like this, and this man is huge. He's wearing rather ornate armor, full plates with gorgeous, intricate details in gold, a crest of an unrecognized house emblazoned on his chest. The whole suit of armor almost shimmers a little bit as he moves, seeming slightly lighter than you would expect from effect, or perhaps he is simply that strong. A strange greenish silver metallic hue to it, at least the parts that aren't intricately covered in gold. Looks like it's your lucky day then. Your bond's been paid. And he watches another person and comes over and unlocks the gate. Follow me. And turns I'm to not gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna lift a gift horse in the mouth. Torquia's garage gets up. Mm -hmm. Tori you should all follow. And follows. But, um... you get into the, as you do get into the hallway, you notice there are four other guards here. Proper, just the city guards. They're all armored and armed, of course, but they're definitely not equipped in the same way this individual is. As you follow this hulking and also crouched and awkward looking form of the Minotaur as he ascends this tight staircase, heading out the front. I thought we were uh, chained to uh, place it inside. You were only chained. Your hands are still chained together, and they've certainly made no indication they are about to unshackle you. Okay. Yeah, I was about Whatever. to say. Can, can so magical colors are still on. Got it. Yes, you are very much still bound. Time. Walking up, you find yourselves in a room that most of you only have the foggiest memory of. Sort of reception room. A locked, heavy-looking iron door in the corner, currently open, with four individuals wearing the same crest as you've seen on the chest of the Minotaur, though far more utilitarian servant wear, so to speak, are loading your equipment into a series of boxes. Large steamer trucks. Those steamer trucks. Careful are... with that. I growl. Yeah, steamer truck is not the right term, but you understand the type of storage vessel I am referring to. Yeah. I growl careful with that as I see them handling my glaive. Outside. As you walk out. May I do a history? The... On what? What are you trying to ascertain? The crest. You may. You may. Ten. Ten. It's... You're not familiar with it. It's definitely not one that you've seen in Aleros before. Um, the styling is foreign to you, and the language on it is, wait a minute, do you speak? Mm -hmm. You can see that there is some language on it, though you can't make it out, and it's written in draconic runes. But that's about all you can tell. As your party okay. is ushered outside, you see a, frankly, massive carriage before you, towed by six very fine-looking white horses. Horses. The entire thing carved from a beautiful dark ebony wood and emblazoned with silver <laughs> trim and bronze decor. This massive side door is open to you and another handful of guards and porters are arranged outside of it. Get in. The Minotaur gestures to you all. See no reason not to. Very finely crafted carriage. Going Murphy's inside is very uh, hesitant, but follows nonetheless. As you come inside, you notice the interior is equally well decorated. These beautiful, rather light purple drapes apes cover the windows, as well as beautiful purple velvet upholstery with green trim. It is one of the most comfortable seats you have ever, you have had in quite some time, and that statement applies to all of you. As you arrange yourself in, you see that the Minotaur or stays at the door. There is only one door to this carriage along the right side, about the middle. And you see the porters come back outside and begin loading your trunks into the cargo area. Before the Minotaur clambers up inside and sits at the door, sits on the bench facing the door. There's a bit there on the inner side. Hmm? Is it bigger on the inside or? This is a very large carriage. It is not, you don't detect any sort of trickery and scale. This is simply a large carriage, definitely built to carry individuals the size of this plate-armored minotaur. 
Now that he's proper out properly outside, you have a full voice, you can uh, full view of him. You can see that he has a helmet affixed to his belt that kind of dangles about. Is a very form fitting mask of sorts that kind of hinges down at the back with holes for his horns. Equally intricate and definitely of an incredibly expensive design. As you all kind of get arrayed in there and the final preparations are made before the carriage lurches into motion, he turns to you, Turbius, and gives you a kind of quizzical look. You're from the homeland, aren't you, Wilp? Hmm. He says this to you in Draconic. Several of you do understand that. Why, why Draconic? It's odd. If that you think so. No, can't hide an accent. You're northern. What's your clan? I am one of the Steel Hoof. <laughs> They're still kicking around, then. Or they were running into trouble in the past years. I've been gone from home for too long, though. Good clan. Good people. Definitely too focused on interacting with the outsiders, but kind of gestures around. This isn't doesn't exactly belong to me, so uh, who am I to judge? And he sits back and just kind of just keeps his eyes on you. You get the distinct impression he's just making sure there's no funny business as you continue to drive either in the back of this carriage for a while. And no effort is made to hide the draconic. Well, you would know, in fact, from this exchange, that this individual is... No, that's, 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 a, that's a lowered question I'm asking the two of them. Oh. Because Same I reason have... as you do, I suppose. It's what we grew up with back home. Hmm. I don't know the accent. You Probably would know if you knew where we came from. Do. You don't uh, miss things. You smell a home. Question. Uh, where's uh, Zaisu Yavi's going? And I say that in fluent Draconic. The dinner. <laughs> then are the shackles necessary? Bree Scratch uh, slinks back a little bit. He, he looks over at you, Torin. You tell me. As long as resting on a dinner, large table to side. As long as it's just dinner. We shouldn't have a problem. My employer does not job. like taking chances. And you haven't no. exactly come with a stellar reputation. Balgorse lends over to Tiberius. Is it common that everyone speaks their tongue outside of a homeland? Who's Tiberius? The, I think meant Turbius. He was referring to Turbius. Sorry. Let's yeah, see. Turbius. Uh, does Corky Scratch hear that, or is it low enough and there's enough uh, ambient noise? Just to... With your passive perception and the loud noise in here and this many people, probably not if he was being pretty quiet about it. Yeah, okay. I meant to say Torin. Sorry. I meant to Torin. say Torin. Yes. No, it's not. I thought this was, I thought this was a bit strange. Did you see what the writing on their emblem said? Unfortunately, I'm You can not take a perception check. The guy is sitting in front of you. He's kind of... He looks more at this point. He seems to have assessed that you're not about to try anything. He's kind of just looking out the window. That's a d20, right? Yeah. Or no, I, I, let, me, let me actually do that for my character sheet. I'm yeah, sorry. do it. I need to... Uh, yeah. But anyway... Perception is intelligence. Or if you click the Perception details, but should be on the cog. Page, it's in the skills. <laughs> um, it appears you discovered you might be slightly nearsighted, and ultimately. <laughs> Maybe it's just the carriage bouncing around. Maybe, no, it's probably that hangover you're still nursing, but you just can't really make it out. The lettering is fine, both in, it's like, you can read it. 
ish, but it is done in a very elegant filigree sort of writing. It isn't exactly meant for Claire. I'll allow yes. one, one other person to attempt a perception check on that. Statement. I guess since it was directed towards me, I'll make it quick. Oh, forget it. It's not double click. There we go. Okay, we're fucking hammered. Again, the text is kind of hard to read, but looking at it, you're very certain that this is Narakeshi design, Western design, maybe from Krivan or further south. It is. You don't recognize the house, but it is definitely from. Not exactly where you're from, but it's something you've seen before. It seems slightly familiar, or so, but I am not. Sure, exactly. It looks from the western side of the continent. Uh, maybe if we could take a better look, but... I, I still find oh. it strange that there are... So many who are speaking our tongue. Mm, I agree. Would you prefer if I spoke in common the whole time? No, it's fine. No, We're just curious. I mean, just look up at there's the plenty of people from back home here, boys. Perhaps you'll learn something from them. Understood, Hopefully, I sir. I meant no offense. I wouldn't deem that an offense. <laughs> the carriage continues on for almost an hour in total. The relatively smooth, though pockmarked roads of the city giving way into the much more open and rough country roads as you continue to the east of Estor. Staying relatively close to the coastline, but traveling relatively far. You're definitely outside of the city, and it is... Hang on, sorry, I'm losing track of my fucking pages. Eventually, though... Oh, also, Garrus said, right <laughs> said something. Garrus said something? Mm-hmm. Endgame. He you... said something in Orcish. <laughs> yes, he did. Um... She just kind of mumbles, like, mm-hmm. And that's about the only answer you get. Hello? Oh, uh, you no, see really Balgor nice, snort but... a little bit when he hears Orcish. I'm confused. Is Orc and Orcish two different languages? No. No, it's because just... Because it doesn't way. show up. Yeah, I don't see what he typed either. Strange. He wrote it in Sylvan. Uh, oh, well, that's oh, okay, oh, I thought I, I thought it was Orcish. My bad. No. So it's <laughs> more French. Okay, so it's more French like. Okay. Let me remember what languages this guy speaks once. Looks like fucking Hebrew. Mm. Um it looks like Sanskrit, honestly, in my It looks like wingdings. <laughs> Not the wingdings. The wingdings. They know you're a ranger, dude. You get the language by default. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as the, as the ride continues to drag to drag on, you finally begin coming in to see into a. Uh, hang on. Finally, something begins coming into frame. Why am I saying this like this? Sorry, I'm still a little high from earlier. I tried to get <coughs> it, but I'm still just like. <coughs> you okay, brother? Where are we? <laughs> Uh, at least you had a fun smooth, time. Smooth fast. Yeah. The scenery changes as the carriage leaves the coastal mountains and traverses a rolling green plantation fields beyond. Sticking out of the fields, you see the workers, most of them chained together into long lines as they pick the, this, this season's crop, which is tobacco. Sitting above the sea, as, as the carriage comes over a rise and begins turning to the right, look, and, and, as it continues meandering down this trail, you see a large manor coming into view. Ten-foot-tall black walls ring, ring it as the central structure built... Sorry, um, apologies. Built in a definitively Narrakesh style begins to appear. You're not really sure where the stone for this came from, as everything around here seems to be built of limestone, but this is dark, black volcanic rock, maybe basalt or rhyolite or similar. The whole building is 
large and almost looks out of place, standing against the co this and contrasting heavily with the scenery around it. Around it. The complex, the main building itself is a large, almost T-shaped structure, though it goes back further and you frankly haven't gotten enough of a view, besides knowing that this is noble property with certainty. Inland from the manor, which does overlook the seaside cliffs, are a series of far more poorly built wooden structures and buildings surrounding a small, nondescript, but stone chapel and a well. Vast fields of crops grow around in every direction. You can see workers out in the fields much like you did before, though here you also begin to see those who are minding them. Usually armed with nothing more than a whip, but... Even at this distance, you get a very unsettling threat and feeling just looking upon these individuals. Many of them kind of glance up and watch you drive by. Finally, you arrive at the gates, guarded <laughs> by no fewer than six... Excuse me? Sorry, sorry, I was just reading what Roxby said. <laughs> How do we Quarter actually do four. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Oh. Finally, you come upon a large wrought iron gate set into the wall. No fewer than six individuals are stand standing guard at it as the driver s er, shouts something muffled, muffled at them and the gates swing open, leading you down a very well-paved stone, stone driveway of sorts up in front of this large manor. Opposite from it, as you come to a stop in front, you see a large white marble sculpture of a sea serpent rising out of a body of Surprisingly elegant, in contrast with the more brutal simplicity yet grace of the large foreboding structure. The door flies open, open briefly as the as the as the uh, driver comes comes over to the door. All right, all you out. Follow me. As, as the large minotaur again departs, parts the carriage. Yo, scumbag. As you walk into the, as you all walk in through the main entrance, which is held open for you, you're struck by just the scale of this place. 50 feet deep, eight wide, and maybe 150 long, these huge vaulted ceilings, most of which are made of a beautiful mix of stained glass with crystal chandeliers hanging above. Gold and gold gilding is applied to many of the wooden surfaces in the room, carved from ornate and exotic pieces. Art, artwork, paintings, mounted weapons, and animal carcasses, well, taxidermied skulls and such, as decorate the walls as a long and beautiful little red carpet lays out before you from front to back. You don't spend long in this opening atrium, though, as you're quickly ushered off to the side, and down a few more passages and into, ooh, what you can probably guess might be the servants' quarters. They are definitely not built with the same standards. Behind your party, the porters continue walking along, and you're finally led to a single side room, relatively large. Right, get changed. Oh, come here. As the Minotaur holds up a set of keys in front of you. The porters drop off one case, one of the cases inside before leaving with the other two. As the Minotaur unlocks all these shackles and leaves, leaves you into the room. Get dressed. Freshen up if you need to. Five minutes. He closes the door behind you. Going over to the, the chest in the center of the room, it is... Yes, I, sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on the reading. Anyway, you, you head into this room, boom, and it appears to be... Like a locker room of sorts, if for such a term. There's many hooks on the walls hanging with different work gear of all sorts. No one else is in here at the time, and the door at the back is visibly barred. But all of your regular clothing, none of your weapons, none of your armor, none of your magical devices, except for one. Yes, you do notice that your particular wristwatch appears to have been left in. Well, not wristwatch, pocket <coughs> watch appears to have been left in with these other accessories as you ready to begin donning your regular clothes. Now, I'm going to go get some water. I'll be right back. 
My immersion! No. no! God left us! <laughs> God has forsaken us! Land. Disrespect your surround! <laughs> oh no, he's back already! Got a bit of a moment of silence here if you want to express your thoughts on what's going on. Um, as soon as our gear is placed down, Malgorst quickly rummages into his pack and puts on an amulet. You do notice that your actually your amulet as well as that of Roxby are also present here. It appears that they've separated out your combat-related equipment from your casual wear. Your regular clothes, clothes are in here, though your bags are also not present. So we have our armor, but no weapons. No, you have your clothing. You have your oh, clothing. regular clothing that you we have. We have our undergarments that normally go under our armor. Ah. So some of you have separate clothing that you could wear as well. And it's yes. Scratch, in your case, you have your clothing. <laughs> you have your regular armor. So you do not actually wear it. But need to. It gets in the way in dungeon delving. Very well. Oh, I basically have my gamson and my tunic. Yep. Gamson would be process armor, but yes. You, you have what you would wear going, you brought, everyone brought kind of regular clothes that you would go out like into town if you weren't being armored for a day. Mm. So, so me and um, Belgaris would recognize each other's houses. Belgaris has no house. The name of bears is that of an ancient great house that was famous during the first era, but it is one that has been extinct for probably three or four thousand years, as far as you would know, and is often okay. given to orphans. The names of yeah, ancient my, my, houses yeah. are given to give some gravitas to orphans. You do recognize the symbol on my tunic, though. Wait, I was going to say, like, when I, is my, I think, would my rank be on there? You have a set. You have your formal uniform, whatever you brought with you to. Okay, that's that. what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So you you definitely you definitely have the highest potential for cleaning. So up. yeah, I, I I I yeah. There, there is also a wash basin in the corner of the room and some you know relatively clean looking rags. To dry right, give myself a quick whore bath, I guess. And then... Perky oh, sure, stretches where like... starts to poof out just a little. Yeah. And then I as I don my uniform, I unfurl my wings to a more. Not like to where I'm taking <laughs> off or anything, but you can see them and they show my station and nobility. Yeah. You're still... I mean, you clean, You are all kind of a bit dirty after the events for... Some of you... Um, no, you would have... I don't think anyone puked directly on you, though. It does appear that your clothes are... Um, in the state, they were in the day before, certainly. Perky stretch is probably... Slightly cleanest, probably. You just begin grooming yourself like a cat, just. <laughs> well, I didn't get marked out, nor did I, did I participate in Correct. the alcohol. You... Exactly. Perky Stretch finds a smoke. Like Perky Stretch uh, finds a dark little cor corner and gets her clothes, her actual clothes, back on. Mm hmm. I'm wondering why that was a perfect set. After a couple of minutes, as you've all finished getting ready, there's a knock at the door. You all ready? Yes, sir, I do believe door so. Door opens. It looks <laughs> like it. All right. Come on. As he steps aside and, like, gestures you. <coughs> you do notice that two other guards from earlier... These ones, not dressed in certain in equipment of the same quality, but both wearing chain mail and armed with, appear to be mostly just long swords, kind of slung at their side at this point. Like though one of them also has a mace, interestingly enough, and kind of just file in behind you as you're led through several more little winding corridors within this very very large house before coming into what can only be described as a banquet hall, though only one table is currently positioned in the room sitting right in front of a grand fireplace, which is gently crackling with an unnatural greenish glow to it. It doesn't seem to be really heating the room all that much. 
The walls in this room are, frankly, even more opulent than the ones in any other part of the house you've seen. Tons of displays of items of unknown quantity. By the way, your magic things were also taken off. Um, all sorts of swords and axes and spears and banners from unknown places. Whoever owns this place is certainly well-traveled. Some of you begin to recognize a few things. You see a couple of firearms that you might be familiar with from Maleros. You see, this, oddly enough, a banner belonging to a dead Narakeshi house. The creep... Forget the name of that one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just doing my best here. Do I, do I recognize that dead house uh, from my military service at all? It is a house from Dilsorak Tour. One that is... Its last member seems to have disappeared about 15 years ago, around the time your um, parents met their fate, unfortunately. Smaller house, but interesting that their official banner would be here. Mm -hmm. uh, also... May I roll a perception check? Especially with the timing. Yes, go ahead. Ooh. I'll see a damn thing. To kind of glance around the room, you are sort of taken aback by the sheer scale of everything you've seen, just the amount of variety of objects. It is, it is almost a bit cluttered. Though everything is set aside and elegantly framed, it is all a lot. This person, you get the impression, is trying to show off all their things. Something you do notice, kind of a tingle at the back of your neck. There's magic here. You can't exactly place where it's from, but you definitely get the sense that there's multiple spells in effect. And probably some of these items might have uses that might be more than meets the eye. <sighs> Where are you scratching some mental notes? What? The Minotaur are kind of folds his arms in the corner. The Master will be out shortly. Take your seats. Gestures to the sides of the table. He, however, stands just kind of in the side of the room, crosses his arms, watches over the party. Four other guards. As Quirky Scratch goes to take a seat, he watches Balgoris comes up behind her chair and pulls it out for her. Quirky Scratch does a slight curtsy and thanks you. What the gentleman? No, my pleasure, my lady. You all kind of gather around. But you do notice Balgorst does not take a seat until Torin takes a seat. Urbius does not take a seat at all. Thorin takes a seat next to Perky Scratch on her right side. You all gather down at the table. You're kind of sitting there in awkward silence, just wondering exactly what's supposed to happen. Is there a glass <laughs> of water for me to drink from? There is nothing set on the table yet. There is some cutlery and some flatware. Not much. <laughs> you know, I wasn't certain this would actually work, but as you watch as a, a figure suddenly appears sitting at the head of the table. I did want to see exactly how you joined. Welcome to my home. And one, one second as I share this image with you. Why uh, can't I share? <laughs> It's him. It's Houdini. Uh, let me share this. I am you. him. It's supposed to... Hang on, let me pull this into the other... Funk music starts playing. <laughs> I just want to show this page. Not Specifically the synth way of funk. Right, give me one second. Ugh. There we go. This what is this funk you speak of? Where are... I give the misdirection. I just figured it would be interesting to see how people behave when they don't think they are being watched by their superiors. Welcome. I am Lord Salachek Ross, 4th Lord of Castor, owner of this establishment. 
and a state. And you all... It was quite the scene the night before. We have much to discuss. But first... Food! She watches several servants immediately start pouring in through the doors and laying out a grand buffet before you. Before you. Um, uh, all sorts of... As, all sorts of meals, meats and cheeses and delicacies. There's fresh bread, there's fresh fruit of all manner of varieties, including many that you would not expect to find in this part of the world. Part of the world. Wine is poured for each of you of an unknown own of an unknown vintage, so it is a red. And the gentleman begins swirling around a small glass full of a dark colored amber liqueur. I'm sure you're wondering what all this is about. I do enjoy toying with people sometimes. It just breaks the monotony of such a quiet day. But perhaps we should discuss what happened before. Which part? Quite the bits. To my knowledge. I'm just, I, I, I kind of did things in order I wasn't planning on, and now I'm trying to find all my shit. Apologies. I will be better at this in future sessions. Yes, Dude, so. you're fine. Keep going. You're doing good. Oh, swipe it. How about we start with the facts? Excuse me, sir. Yes? I must ask. Not all of our actions might have constituted our arrest. I ask why were we incarcerated? Well, simply put, the fact of it is you managed to deeply offend the fifth Lord of Castor. Lord Karnak, asshole. Burning down the Jolly Crustacean was certainly a play, one that I would have supported had you come to me for support in this, but definitely one I needed to intercede with as a result. There are five Lords of Castor. I am the third, is the fifth, and is deeply disliked by the others. You see, there's not much to challenge us, so we resort to messing with one another wherever possible. It certainly bees new light into the circumstance, but I digress. We are getting off topic. You are the topic here. And boy, did you get this done. As you see, he kind of pulls out a uh, stack of papers in front of him. Balgor Stinesh, public intoxication, disturbing the peace, rioting, brawling. Total fine, 190 gold pieces, 25 silver, 23 days hard labor, deferred intent in favor of 10 years of slavery to Lord Karnak. Gaurish Forrester, slandering a noble, public intoxication, unlawful assembly, 340 gold fine, one year hard labor, deferred in favor of 10 years of slavery to Lord Karnak. Lotus? She is conscious by now, she's just not saying anything we're gonna go with, because it, it makes no sense ever just passed out the table at this point. <laughs> Petty theft, public indecency, possession of narcotics, resist, resist, resisting detention. 72 gold pieces, 10 days in stockade, 5 days hard labor, deferred, in, uh, in, deferred for 10 years slavery to Lord Karnak, quirky scratch. That's a fun one. Criminal trespass, breaking and entering, robbery, unsanctioned use of hostile magic, resisting detention, 527 gold piece fine, 100 days hard labor, deferred in, in favor, 10 years slavery to Lord Karnak. I think you're going to see the pattern here, but I have to read this one. Thorin. Yes. Public intoxication, disturbing the peace, public urination, brawling, assault, attempted bribery of a public official, successful bribery of law enforcement, inciting a riot, rioting, vandalism, hampering justice, arson, attempted blackmail of a noble, resisting detention, and failure to settle debts. 1,393 gold pieces of gold, gold fine, 272 days hard labor, subsequent removal of right hand, deferred in favor of 10 years slavery to Lord Garnack, Tobias Steelhoof, you forgot to register at the port. Honest mistake, unfortunately, would have given you five years of hard labor. And Rox B. It doesn't sound right. You need to know where you're traveling to. Minitars are... Well, I certainly have a positive view. Drogan here is... I mean, Drogan, are you happy with your uh, uh, current uh, current uh, status here? Do you see as the Minotaur you let, that you let him with just kind of shrugs like... You're the boss. Right. And finally, Lorx B, failure to register as an orc, public intoxication, rioting. 
I do have to ask about that story sometime, but... More to the point. I did not bring you here simply because you managed to get yourself in deep shit and annoy a rival of mine. No. That was just the start. You see, I find myself in a bit of a bind. Normally I would task those who work directly for me for such an endeavor, however... I only have a handful of individuals currently present. Most of my talented associates are otherwise occupied elsewhere. A ship carrying an important piece of cargo for me it was waylaid by pirates some days ago now. I believe I know where they are hiding. However, I need... Less valuable individuals willing to take such a risk to clear the path and recover my shipment. And we must go quickly, for they are to leave soon, I believe. But for now, dinner. And soon, I will give you more information. Your equipment will be provided to you when the time comes. Well, sounds like we get off easy for 10 years' service to you doing missions you rather not risk more talented individuals for. Seems like a fair contract. This is Tell a us what we're getting idea. into, and we shouldn't have any problems on my end. Of course. You will be I going disagree. In. This seems like a... I believe those of the sailing path call it a Shanghai... <laughs> mm, but how long do your voyages take? Six, eight months? It's a it's trap. Just, it's just a couple voyages. You'll be traveling kind of to like White that. Isle. It is a day and a half sail for a fast ship, and I have a very fast ship. You will be let go back here once the timing is... You'll be let go as soon as the job is complete. I do not simply have that much use for you going forward. If you do prove yourself and show to be of value, then perhaps there will be more work going forward going forward, but for now I really do just need this one thing, and I'm perfectly willing to cash in a couple of favors with the guard to cause you to go missing unexpectedly. I paid barely barely ten silver for this. I intend to get my money's worth. I do hope you're worth more mm. than that, however. Mm. My Lieutenant Susanna will accompany you. It should be a fairly simple task for individuals of your status. All of you do come here with some interesting backstories, I must say. They've got a cleric, likely a devoutee of Odin, based on the symbol on your neck. Dolosian, no doubt. You're not from Narrakesh, you would have deleted me as such. And a ladrine? Of some sort. Lack of metal armor. Antlers, flowers, you are druid. Half orc, the heir of a protector, a hero, no less. Ranger, perhaps. From the east, you carry yourself like someone from the rural lands. A scholar from the Chancery of Ash, no doubt a native of Nokas at that. Thorin the Monus, knightly house of, of Sinterscale. Small, but well regarded. You have quite a history with the cavalry back home. Seems they liked you rather well. Belgoris Tanesh, member of the Order of the Ash. Impressive. And finally, a Minotaur, from back home, a bit lost on a vision quest. Or journey of other forms. One question before we go. For you, my lord. Of course. How come I, we haven't crossed paths? I've met and dealt with many lords in my time at the cavalry officer. Well, I have not been back to the homeland in some... 30 years? You'll see... Mm. Uh, the start I of my service, I understand. Start of your life. Uh, my life, sorry. 
that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Originally, I'm from Clivan. However, being the third son in a house results in some difficulties in inheritance. Myself and my cousin Ikor decided we would find our fortune elsewhere. He wound up staying in Oleros. I believe he's still running things out of Takar. Quite a famous smuggler he is at this time, I hear. I, meanwhile, continued to travel for quite some time, before ultimately settling down here. It seemed a peaceful life, full of very creative and interesting mysteries. Maybe I should return and ask about your mysteries and your discoveries. <laughs> but of course, this room is but full of artifacts of my own recovery. It's Are very you curious, interesting. curious about any? Mm -mm. Yes. But if we must recover your items quickly, we should get to it. We have time for discussion later. We ready to sail until morning as it is, and none of you are in a particularly combat-ready state. Except for the cat. Understood. What is this roll for? That old uh, dragon house. I think he's trying to see if he recognizes anything. You see a mounted head of was probably a green dragon in the corner. Can't really tell from the fact that it is just a skull, but eh, from what you remember, it definitely appears to be a green dragon. Maybe a metallic of some kind, though? It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, that was for Garish. I think you tried that before as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm answering his question. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but first, we shall eat. He watches he begins filling his plate. Please do not hesitate on the conversation. Dinner is always so boring. The same people. And you are all so different. It has it to say that fate has brought you here for a reason. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, oh, for, for, oh, okay. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> so, Belgoris. You said you were a sailor, or mentioned a little of sailing. What did you do back home? As you say, good sir, I am knowledgeable of the sailing arts, but I have never personally became a sailor myself. That will prove helpful I... tomorrow. The ship is sailing with only a skeleton crew. I really, really need to fix this hangnail, gosh. Apparently, we must, we must now learn According to our master's instruction, it won't be very much. Susanna would take care of that. As it is, I have other business to attend to over the next few days, so I will be traveling to another place. But no, good sir, I am not a sailor by trade. I am. The best way to describe what my profession is is a guardian of the rail. The order What's seems unit? to have fallen on harsh times as of late, I hear you. Knight, my full title is Knight Balgoris Tanesh of the Order of the... of the Order of the Ash. Ah, I recognize the Order of the Ash. A it couple of young... me and my order that you do, sir. You've done me a great, my family a great service by returning a few of my dead from a savage ambush it is much appreciated I've also heard tales of your glory of your house it is an honor to meet you I thank you good sir it is always good to hear of one of noble lineage recognizes my orders great deeds I do ask are you guys speaking in common yes yeah. okay <laughs> that's good to say I, I would be uh, I, I think I, we'll say in our alternate languages if we're not, and then you can like oh. mentally roleplay not, or we can type it out in the alternate language. <clears throat> nah, it's more fun to hear you talk, but at the same time, <laughs> just so that if you guys were, I would have just been like, you know, very interesting to be part of a group of people that all speak a language I fucking don't. <laughs> <laughs> Your comic is not a very difficult language to learn. <laughs> As it is, I mean, those three are all from the same home as I. Draconic is our 
state language. You can thank the ancestors of the uh, Dragonborn there for that. History saw them conquer all of Marrakesh, after all. And much of your homeland as well, though, didn't really stick in Dolos. Dwarves are hearty people. Not to discount what? the Orcish efforts in that, but... Pretty sure I just, uh... Pretty sure I just shifts her fucking shoulders up like, eh, this is, like, uh, she has a few more languages that some of you might not. Mm. Orc charges were difficult to overcome, even with cavalry flanking attacks. Your uh, long weapons and archers were difficult. Alongside one. I do hope you, I do hope this works out. As I say, you are free to go once this task is completed, but I'm always looking for more assets. Should you prove yourself to be one, then we can talk. Seems like we're all looking for work based on our actions. <laughs> hey, if we're being an asset yet. feeds me food like this... This is the cost of your freedom. <laughs> freedom okay. tastes pretty good. <laughs> I do yes. I the best. Freedom. Freedom with chains. Every government is not the greatest, as we know. Well, uh, this is not... Brought our asses deep inside a dungeon somewhere with uh, certain creatures rusting away our armor and weapons. This is true. It seems like a simple task. Some pirates? Come on. Look at us. We should be able to handle it. I do certainly hope so. Listen, we're going to say for now, for the sake of expediency, the meal is kind of coming to an end. Mm -hmm. As it stands, I will have Drogon show you to some rooms. Real quick, where are these pirates from? And quick rundown of their armor, that you know, if you heard of any. They are independent contractors. Possibly part of the Black Fleet, possibly Sea Wolves, possibly unaffiliated. I simply know that they have waylaid the vessel. How many ships? I believe only one in this instance. Mm, should be simple. Hopefully we return soon with your items. I do hope so. Speaking Until then. What are these you items like? you're asking us to collect? You will find a sealed strong box with a golden a golden symbol on the top. That's just as much detail as you need. There will only be one such item present. Do not oh, open it. Do not same attempt as your crest? to open it. I will know if you have. Understood. We will return the item unopened, undamaged, ideally. I do not think you would be able to damage it even if you tried. The box, yes, Understood. probably. It is metal, but it's the thing. That which it contains is certainly far more valuable. Until then, though, you should all get some rest. Drogon, lead them to some rooms. As Lord Ekros stands, gives you a polite, if slightly patronizing bow, and walks away, and you see, somehow unnoticed by all of you, you wouldn't believe the stealth tech this guy rolled, a second Minotaur, almost the same size as the first one and wearing very similar, very intricate greenish silver plate armor. Apparently, having just stood in the corner of the room, walks out and follows him out the door. All right. Come with me. Dragon kind of follow. Yeah. Or I follow at least. Um... No, as follows. There are other guards also escorting you. You are you are, get the distinct impression here that you are being kept on a very short leash. I grab a drumstick before I leave. <laughs> okay. Um, Not a bad idea. Just don't get it on. I it. have a question, sir. Yes. Are we allowed to? roam the grounds freely. The uh, master has dictated you are to be confined to your chambers for the rest of the night. Understood. There's an adjoining water closet. Minor bathing facilities between the two rooms we put you in, so 
You want some fresh air? There's a balcony. May I have my pipe? On the balcony. Is uh, was my tobacco recovered, or will I have to purchase some from you, gentlemen? <laughs> you watch him kind of reaches into his back pocket and pulls out a small, small little cloth pouch. You toss it, like little oil uh, pouch. You toss it to you. Take a pinch or two. I don't really care. My shit's Thank almost you, done anyway. Have a good evening. Some now, how fresh is the tobacco? <laughs> um, it's actually like very high end. Like this is, you get the impression that this is top of the line product, likely from this estate. I go out and bag and keeps it fresh. I go out into the after returning the bag. I go out to the balcony and light my. No, he's pipe. just tossed it to you and walked off. Oh, he, he just gave it to you. You can add you can add one bag one small pouch of tobacco worth worth ten gold to your inventory. Cool. I'll add it to your inventory in a bit. Ten gold. That's pretty expensive tobacco. Yeah. And he just gave it to you without a second thought. So clearly we're not in that much danger. I mean, if it's just sending uh, well, I look sorry, I look at the other dragon mode. Before let me he description though. So he Wait, you have you want to say something to Drogon before he leaves? Uh, no, to the um, uh, Belgoris. You're you are directed to two. Uh, before you get in there, you're directed to two adjoining rooms. What rooms? Both of which have three or four beds. You get the impression that these are not like the quarters of visiting dignitaries, but maybe of their retainers. They're rather nice. They're nice and cool, despite the relatively a hot day outside. A retinue's corners, basically. Yes, exactly. The retainers. There, um, there's a bit of privacy. Some sheets can be pulled between the beds to separate them out somewhat. But there's a small common living area with a table in the corner and a couple of chairs. A bookshelf on the wall, though currently barren of books of any nature. An intricate iron and glass doorway that leads out onto a beautiful balcony overlooking the sea, in fact. You're currently on cliffs, maybe two, three hundred feet above the shoreline, and as you look, if you look out over them going down, you see there's a large series of two docks stretching out from the ground, effectively directly below the estate, one of which is occupied by a rather small for this, well, what you've seen, but sleek-looking Narakeshi ship of an unknown make. Now you may have your roleplay. So before we enter our chambers, and as I'm loading my pipe, I look to Belgoris and say, can't be so bad. They're giving us all this food, free tobacco, a mission, and freedom. They're only sending one guy with us, can't be to wipe us out afterwards, probably just to make sure we don't backstab him. As you say, sir, but gilded chains are still chains. Yes, I cannot disagree with that. Good line, yes. However, these are very short chains. And ones that are quickly removed from the sound of it. If Personally. We do, if we have to do him service in the future, it might keep us out of trouble. I'd say, personally, these chains of paper and contract are much better than metal and bind. You didn't say anything. You didn't sign anything. Next, I'll check uh, the uh, chat in the. Um, they're not. They're not white cliffs. They're not chalk. They are limestone. So it's much more of a rocky. It, it, you're kind of on just a bluff overlooking the sea. It's not quite white cliffs of Dover scale, but it is a very rocky coastline. Um, let me. I'm gonna reply to that one. In Discord. I don't know how to do it in the game or, the, or in the thing. I don't know what the whisper uh, is. Like. It's chat on the right. Top so if right. you go to, if you go into chat, chat you can change mm -hmm. it to a language no one knows, or see if you can do slash w. Let me just double check that. You can also you can do slash whisper. Mm. Uh, 
Oh, and these God. chains. They oh, really you can do, chains. Here, do slash WGM and then your message. Uh, space between W and GM? Yes, and... Okay. What are you uh what are you looking for? Yep, so cool. And this chains. nearby. Um you if you're looking out over the balcony, you absolutely see a whole bunch of seabirds down by the docks, as well as just kind of scattered about the place, picking at the ground and looking for something to eat. Nothing particularly close to you, however, and uh you are on the third floor of a stone building. You have not seen any sign of rodents, even with a check like that. Which like holy fuck, dude. <laughs> First nat 20 of the game. Perception! <laughs> what do my eyes see? <laughs> Douglas, what do your eyes show um, us? The linen <laughs> is very clean, you can tell. Um, it's about nice. By now in the day, the sun is just beginning to dip below the horizon. And you... Just feeling that finding some rest while you can might be wise. If anyone has anything left to do before the next morning, now is the time to do it. Uh, I see if I can perform the loot. Yeah, the site ambiance too. You were not given your instruments yet. Mm, those yeah. the, those okay. are not in your possession. Okay. You have... I, what? What's your name? I gold Thor, and that's your name. Yeah, Thorin. you don't have your money yet either. Okay. Yes, Karsh. Uh, question. Are you privy to sharing that smoke pipe? Hmm, I'm not against it. I wouldn't appreciate it. It's been quite a stressful evening. Ah, yes, it has. Yeah. As they scream from the balconies of their private rooms. It, the rooms are uh, joining, and what they've indicated is that men in one, women in the other. Oh, oh, so all the males are in one room and all the females are in one room. <laughs> Yeah, there's like, you know, if you've ever been in a house where you've got two bathrooms joined by, or two bedrooms joined by a common bathroom, it's kind of that setup. Oh, okay, cool. So, like, we're, ob uh, we're obviously on the balcony doing this. I look to him and say, How old are you, for an orc? You look fairly young. Only been 19. Oh. Been short travels, short travels. Did you, uh, partake in any of the campaigns? No, my family like, raised me. My family raised me for a religious purpose. Mm. I met many orc priests after the fights. How have they treated you? They were easy to get along with. It was common for the dead to be respected on both sides, for most part. Oh, my father is only speaking common truths of the dead. You only ever speak kind. You only ever speak truth. The orcs fought well. It is uh, definitely interesting. I appreciate the smoke, good sir. Ah, yes. Ah, tell me, how much you have much combat experience? <clears throat> I've only fought to protect my hometown of Duragon. Mm, are you more of a healer? I tend to find <laughs> myself practicing those arts. However, I've practiced defense as well more. Ah, uh, understood. It's better not to have to heal by defeating your enemies than it is to have to heal your team every five seconds. Yes, I, I do worry. New, new. New squads can uh, cause difficulties, mainly well, with high casualty rates and lack <laughs> of cohesion. Oh, absolutely. With combat training, however, I believe that good understanding will be made at some point. Yeah, I see like no we reason don't have for much time for that. We got one day, <laughs> maybe two. Better a few than none. True. The other dragon you seem to speak with, you know him? No, but I recognize his house. He is not of a house, specifically. Um, the name is one that you've heard. It is 
not it's the concept is they often give names of ancient uh, uh, sorry of his clan people. i should say his yeah. order order sorry yeah uh, i recognize the name of his order there we go fair and understood do you recognize the practices of odin no, I'm not overly familiar. Well, I believe that with your war-torn aesthetic, you may fit quite well. Yes, my... One second, I gotta fucking find my god. <laughs> you gotta read through all my notes. Oh, Ghost, you having trouble? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, man. If you, if you can't join it, that's fine. That's why we're recording. Anyway, we're going to take a five minute bio. We'll come back at on the hour. So go and do what you got to do while I get everything set up for the last. Uh, well, not the last, the next section of this session. All right. Cuckoo, cuckoo. It's all good, man. Hey, you can't control the Internet in a random hotel. And in... are you in Denver or where are you? Hell, Michigan. Hell, mm -hmm. Michigan. Is a place, by the way. Or Collins. I've okay. been there many times. Oh, I've never wow. been there. I've just heard it mentioned in South Park a lot. Why the fuck, dude? Oh, I am sorry about those last two. I did not mean for yeah. those to post to you, uh, Exile. What last two? Apparently it sent... Well... Thank two, God it, uh, two ability showed, descriptions to you. Thank God it showed as uh, to me only. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll join you shortly. Hello? 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 Oh, hey, what's up, Red? Oh, no, 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 no. The light has gone out. We're doing D and D. Bro, why do my friends keep posting this, these memes? Did I? Pick a deity? New Maybe campaign not. or continuous of an old one? New campaign. Nice. Why do my friends keep inviting dumb people to these servers? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they keep uh, posting 9 11 memes. Nico, yeah, it makes sense. Careful. I don't know how bad Twitch is. Where the frick is it? Oh, he's a god of dragons and war. Mm. Not much I remember. And he's, uh, chaotic good, I think. Yeah. I thought he was lawful, but, eh? Lawful good, yes, that's what it is. I, I was trying to find him in my, fuck, in my handbook, but I couldn't. Okay, I'll, I'll switch over to clear while we're not in character.
Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Bless you. Alrighty. Oh no, it's an exile. Hello. Hello, comrade. Mm. Alrighty. I got some peanuts. And whiskey. The peanuts. Is the peanuts in the drink as well, or? No. <laughs> you no. look you look like you did not appreciate being asked because that. Peanut butter, because peanut butter bourbon is a thing and I'm offended by its existence. Ah, oh. I've never heard of this. No, like, no but this is, this is like Big Mark. And these are peanuts from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. To be honest, I would never have to be a Costco near me. Well, it's good. They're just general salt. They're, they're just... Bar of peanuts, you know, the general salt yeah. of those peanuts are not nothing fancy. Peanuts. I prefer my peanuts to be barbecue flavored. That's fair. I like the honey roasted, but that's just too many calories. You got a point. Yeah, you got a point. The, the beer nuts that, uh, <laughs> that make you have the container. Although I will say five guys, burgers and fries, just stealing their peanuts is always a good time. I don't think they give a shit. Exactly. That's why it's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> you walk in, yes. you look at them like, I'm going to get some. My only problem with plate. Five Guys is that the entire burger has the same texture. Yeah. But, uh, beer, peanut, beer nuts. It's, just, uh, it's very soft. From this, from this group, uh, aren't that bad. Nice. <laughs> the rest um, is Kirkland's signature. You have, you have Costco in Canada, I feel like. I may never have gone there, but I feel like there's Costco. They have Costco in China. I feel find it hard to believe they wouldn't have a Gehanna. Mm. Anyway, are we ready to get back to this? Yes, sir. Always old. ready. As we all, I'm as we all pull ready. Nice. I'm Anyone ready. Have any, I'm ready. any last minute role play you want to get on before we get moving? Or well, I was originally going to like try and chat up Ganarsh, but since he's a uh, AOL right now. There's always time for next week. Absolutely. Do you say and Lotus can't really come for us because uh, once do I the cheapos I over the corner? Yeah, just <laughs> that's, that's scary. Very interesting way that those two sleep. They just don't sleep. Goodbye, Red. Why Thor. are you watching them sleep? You're in the men's room. What do you mean I'm watching? Never mind. Anyway. The night passes rather peacefully. There's little to hear but the uh, faint breeze coming off of the ocean as it runs up along the side of this opulent and oversized home. Sorry, I'm back. Welcome back. Before the sun rises, back. however, I, I, I need to turn off noise cancellation for this because I was banging it on my desk. It didn't work, but there's a knock at the door. Housekeeping. No one said anything. Uh, which door is it on? Or is it on both? It, it is on the door to the men's room. Enter. No need to enter. Just here to tell you. <laughs> See the same gigantic mentor. You know, it's like the house has high ceilings, but up here on the third floor, it's a little shorter, and he just kind of looks displeased at being where he's at right now. Hmm. A little bit annoyed. Doesn't want to move through to another door. It's your, 
Get your... Hey. About time we give your armor back. He kind of steps to the side, and two porters come in and carrying a very big steamer truck and set it down. Um, actually, we're going to say there's four, because there's a lot of shit. In that. So get armor. ready. I don't wear armor. You're heading down, so you're heading down in an hour. He closes the door and leaves. As you all quickly move to don your equipment and prepare yourself for whatever does lie ahead. You know, Looking sometimes out, you forget is... how good it feels to be weighed down by your gear. Ah, uh, yes, I say as I tap my glaive on the floor. What did the you massive say there, Adachi in question. Like, so quiet. <clears throat> I say, ah, uh, yes, as I tap my glaive on the floor. <laughs> to hear the No, they haven't the given you your weapons back yet. No. They've given you your armor. Rude! They didn't give me anything. Um... Yeah, no, they gave you nothing, Nico. They um, they gave you back your horn and your backpack, and like all they've given you all your equipments, but none of your bladed. Really, they don't consider my horn a weapon. Not the ones on well, the ones in your head are. I mean, the like, dragonborn like, literally, we have claws for weapons. No, I meant my. I, I meant my. I meant my. Uh... Like a drinking horn. No, no it's a special it, it family it horn. English, please don't reveal exactly what it is. It's an elegant family horn that's been passed down for generations. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of it curved, like a ram. Looks to be made of brass or bronze. It's pretty, you know, decorative and clearly has some significance to him with how closely he holds it. Anyway. In a few minutes' time, as you've all managed to don your equipment, those of you who had equipments that you still needed to put on, on, you head out into the hallway where a dragon is just kind of idly waiting in the corner. All right, time to go. Leads you back down a series of staircases, and this time you exit out the back of the estate, noticing large manicured gardens and a hedge maze. Even. Rather charming, kind of, as you kind of walk through. It's almost like the Gardens of Versailles. This whole place is surprisingly barren of people. The fields around are filled with no one. Now, the sun is yet to rise, but it is still a surprisingly quiet morning as you are led down a long, winding path along the cliff face. Rope strung for safety, but the whole thing is about 10 feet wide. And a shallow enough grade that one might be able to push a cart up it, or more likely pull it up with oxen. Hmm. Yeah, did you say that a question out loud, Rox? No, I'm just like, what? I'm just speaking it to myself. Okay, I see, I see. Also, Quirky said something too. Um, no, they did knock on your door as well and tell you the same thing. But, huh. but your shit was all just put in the, uh, it, it, all of your armor was put in the same trunk and left in the men's room, because that's where most of them are. But as, uh, U.S. has most of her equipment to have cast spells and stuff. Yeah, you got all, you got, actually, in your case, the only thing you're missing are your physical weapons, like your sling and your daggers. But you, you have your loot back now. As you head down, down the, you get the imminent sensation that there's something off about this place. Didn't really notice it the day before, but something happens as you walk off of the edge of the estate and start descending this path. That kind of prickling sensation, that presence of ease, as if someone was watching you, seems to evaporate as you leave the structure. Now only the cold breeze from the pre-dawn air blowing through your, well, your whole body's hair, so blowing across you gives you any indication of what you might have felt before, U.S. Me too. As you descend down, down the steps, you finally come come onto the dock itself, and here, Dragon and turns to leave before, well, all right. This is where I leave you. Give him the shit. He turns to leave as the porters behind you drop off the final of the three cases. This one housing all of your weapons. Susanna will come talk to you soon. 
Point of advice. Do what she says. Mm. Oh, yeah. The ship finally sits before you. It is Narakeshi in design, though. Unique. It's not a design you've really recognized, though. You can definitely see the trends in it. It's definitely built to go upwind far more than most of the galleons and other vessels plying these seas, and its narrow, long hull profile with oars stacked on either side tell you that this is a vessel built for speed in any tr any conditions. It's only got a single deck below the water line and is maybe 90 feet long in total. Milling about the deck are probably a dozen or so crew members of mostly humans, two tieflings, and, and, a, and a half orc. So they kind of give you lazy glances as they continue getting everything into position and store it away before you set sail. And finally, another individual steps off. You see a very tall female drow wearing this. Well, how about I show you? you tall drow wearing. I made that one, too. These crimson red eyes and eyes. She wears a large, almost silk looking hat with golden trim. And her whole outfit is seemingly built for nothing but highlighting her figure, interestingly enough, though you can definitely tell there are armored elements hidden throughout the design. And two pistols sling from her from her hips as well as a pair of rapiers. Rapiers. She he kind of swaggers down the deck, walking towards you. Right. So bosses decide to leave me with a bunch of drunken wash-ups. Get aboard. Don't fucking touch anything. She kind of surveys you all. None of you have Is that a threat? Question. I think you get the idea, big boy. Are you the captain of this vessel? That I am. Susanna Soldora. Suppose I could tell you who I am. It's an honor to meet you. Two days I sail ahead of us. for the Minotaur. I don't care. Two days sail ahead of us. You're, you're to be helping with the cleaning and general maintenance of sail plan. Talk to the quartermaster once you're on board. Don't come looking for me. I'm already not going to be on this journey anyway. She kind of walks back up the gameplay, just leaving you behind. I guess we get on board and look for the quartermaster. So she's gonna be fun to work with. Well, good thing uh, we called after. Let's hope we don't have to run into any really bad storms. And he well, was just. Just remember to tie yourself down. We should be fine if we do. Keep a length of rope around your waist, and you'll be fine. That sounds like a great way to get yourself thrown to the depths. As you see, is a kind of. An older-looking human fellow with a pipe sticking out awkwardly over one side of his head. One side of his mouth. If he was sticking out of his head, that'd be a bigger problem. <laughs> and kind of walks up. His scraggly gray hair, definitely both receding hairline and balding, but it hasn't quite met in the middle, so he's almost got this odd stripe of hair across the center of his face. Ace, skin is heavily weathered and wrinkled. This is a man who's spent much of his life outside and on the sea. Yeah, you got the talking to, didn't you? Don't worry about Mistress Lalora. Just, uh, do what she says and keep your mouth shut. Poppy? I don't know which Poppy you're talking about. Popeye. <laughs> no, he's not Popeye, but yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of like Popeye. Yeah, he, he, he's uh, definitely a sort of old yeah, salt. Watch yourself. The, the, the missus. The, 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 the guy you see in the bar just kind of grumbles at everyone who walks in, though he seems surprisingly friendly. Look, uh, so we're going to make things pretty straightforward for you. We're going to just have you doing some of the cleaning and uh, any of you on how to cook. No? All right, fine. He just kind of looks over all of you. None of you ever been working on a ship before, have you? I can work with wood. Well, if, if, if something goes wrong, that's a good skill to have. I oh, mean, you brought your own tools. Perfect. I can make... Mouse, but I've not really made mouse we lose intelligence. Maybe that'd be helpful, but quite frankly, if we're losing shots, we're losing the ship. 
Not much more that we keep more sacred than our actual ways around the seas. You lose the sextant, you lose the charts, you lose your hope. Don't want to do that. Till then, put your ship below deck, whatever you're not carrying with you the whole way. Wouldn't recommend the fucking giant sword or the glaive or all this shit. If we do run into trouble, won't be hard to find. There's some lockers on the side if you want to put them in there. Mostly, stay out of the crew's way. If we tell you to haul shit and push shit, you're going to do it, and you're not going to complain. It's only a day and a half sail with the wind permitting, and so far, things are looking good. Any other questions? When do we sail? Are, are we expecting any borders, or is that not common? Or are we able to outrun most pirates? <laughs> On a ship like this, you can outrun damn near anything. Good to hear. We'll be making 12 knots the whole way. If things go bad and we have to throw out more sail, we can make almost 16. I don't know another ship in the world that can beat, the, beat this clipper. That's impressive. When you pay for what you get. I meant, well, well, you pay for what you get. Oh. Well. Should be fun. Jurus uh, just gets on board and finds some place to stash her pack. Yeah, there's below deck. Um, there aren't like separate rooms. It is one. There's a cabin kind of space at the back of the ship that you presume Susanna is probably staying in. It's also where the charts are kept. But it is a very it is a relatively small ship. And what you find are a series of hammocks laying about and some wooden trunks nailed to the floor along the line. And as you kind of go along, you find a couple that are empty and throw your stuff in them. Yeah, just, just your very, very common cruise quarters. Exactly. No, you're you're not exactly traveling in luxury here. Well, while, while the estate, the carriage, and everything you've seen so far was definitely built for opulence and you know the fine finer things of life, this ship this... is very much just a ship, a well-made one certainly, and one that's definitely not coming out of a catalog, but it is just a ship. So they're so they're obvious like weapon ports and stuff. Before the ship is armed with 16 rather small looking cannons spaced rather close together along its entire length of its lower of its upper deck. Eight to a side. They have. In addition, Peppering. two much longer, probably long nine in type chase cannons sit along the bow. And a more Argorus will take his uh, shield and flail and put it in one of the lockers on the top deck. Unequip them in your inventory. Will do. A few minutes go by and finally, all right, ready to cast off. <laughs> I don't know what voice I was going for there. Some other random crew member shouts. As the lines are thrown in, the last few on the, on the dock climb aboard. The sails are unfurled and you almost feel a lurch as the ship rapidly begins picking up speed and heading southeast or southwest. As time okay. goes on, what? What? No, no. Did you have something to say there, Goku? I said, was in... I was just gonna say it's like the the equivalent of the redoubtable and fucking um naval action, just zero to ten and nothing. <laughs> you are. It is. This is a very light ship that's clearly been built primarily for speed. It is, while surprisingly heavily armed for its size, these are like probably four pound guns. They're small. And you get the impression that this ship is probably more so meant to outrun anything that would actually be strong enough to destroy it. Oh, well, yeah. It's a typical... A good pirate vessel. It would be a good pirate vessel, you might think to yourself. Mm, four pound guns would be hard to take anything. But anyways. Oh. It's a grave shot. Even that four pounder. Yeah, but you gotta get close. And if you're getting within range of those guns, to be honest. Depends on what... Well, uh, are you talking? Is this in character? I think this is all OOC. Yeah, I figured. Because if you make it a character, I can bring someone in, but. <laughs> um, I guess at night, Valgoris would bring out his violin. The first, let me, oh. let me go through this. So the first. Okay, got it. The first day of travel passes relatively without incident. You spend your days cleaning cleaning the decks primarily, and at some points, those of you skilled in carpentry are assigned to help repair a couple of boards that have come loose in the interior. 
They're situated above the ballast, so it's nothing watertight integrity, and it's, they figured we got the extra hands, might as well get some repairs in. The rest of you are mostly just busied with changing the sail plan whenever it comes, and you rapidly figure out that the tasks they're giving you are definitely the easy ones. You don't even see the charts once in this trip, but you get the impression that you're covering quite a bit of ground as you head inexorably southwest. And finally, a bit more west. The first day comes to a close after uh, a relatively peaceful series of, well, a couple days of travel. And you find yourself sitting below decks. Several of the crew members who aren't on watch right now are passed out harder than anyone you've ever seen in your life, while a few more are playing cards near the front of the deck front of the ship where a small table and some chairs have been set aside. It, most of the crew is giving you a fairly wide berth, not really paying much attention to you, and uh, really only answering direct questions more than anything. More or less left to your own devices. I want to roll to see how good I did for repairing stuff for the day. Go ahead. Make me a roll with your carpentry tools. Pretty good. Everyone 30, is very you you do a fantastic you do an excellent job and everyone's quite quite pleased with the work you do. Heck yeah. QS pro basically probably helps uh clean the deck since she has very little little other things to do. You just press the digitationing the whole thing? Uh on some hard spots, yes. Press digitation, but um other spots I do what the others are doing, just try and take some yep. of the workload off. You get, it's a fairly relaxed kind of mood on the ship. Everyone seems to know their purpose and their place, and surprisingly little actual communication happens outside of immediate orders barked by Susanna from the top, from near the helm, periodically throughout the day as the conditions change. At one point, you run through a couple of small rain squalls and have to tie things down, but the pumps only run for a few minutes before the last of the water is removed, and overall... The ship barely gets rocked by this slight inclement weather. Well, if the fresh water has not been topped off, they are catching as much as they can and top off any barrels that are open. The fresh water was definitely full when you left. No one makes any effort to catch any. Okay. As it is, it's a short sail, you've been told. At the end of the first day, all of you are summoned to the captain's quarters. Bulk. So you head through you find this part of the ship has definitely been outfitted with some more creature comforts. A rather comfortable looking bed set on an interesting pivot system that likely keeps it level no matter what the ship is doing it sits in one corner, while a rather nice writing desk is locked tight, but covered in various quills and ink bottles and careful racks to keep them contained. And in the center of the room is a large chest with a map displaying the entirety of the archipelago. Now we're going to see how long it takes everyone to get here. Turbius went immediately. Or Torrin went immediately. Here we go. Yep. It's a, it's This is the largest single image in the game, so it's going to take a minute to load. Yeah, I'm at, stuck at 98. There we go. Wait a second for Belgorus. Right. There we go. Since it does seem we'll have to be working together, at least I might as well know what you're good at. You, Goldie, what's your skill set? I was a cavalry officer for 14 years. Fine. Blue one? Knight of the Order of the Sacred Ash. Ed, Ed, Ed. Another fighter, got it. Takes one look at Nico, at, at uh, Turbius, moves on. Uh, you a wizard? Says looking at well, you know who. Okay, Stretch. Yeah. I'm taking the yes. sorcerer. Oh, well. It means you didn't work for it. Cool. All the same, good to have a little bit of magic on our side. Same with the obvious druid and, uh... Well, he's the only one with a bow, probably a ranger over there. Anybody else? War cleric. You're a cleric. Wonderful. This is going to be a relatively simple plan. We're going to be arriving just offshore a little bit before dawn, about an hour. 
us, and I do mean me as well as you. I'm sorry, okay, but, uh, well. sorry to interrupt. Uh, where, where the brick are we? Uh, there's Start. no marker on it, but you are currently probably about here. I'm pinging. Somewhere between Port uh, Castor and White Isle, where you were headed. Yeah, okay, well, where where is the objective? And You're going to be heading to White Isle. Right. Is that visible to everyone else, by the way? It is. Yep. It is. It, you, and it's could you, I was going to say, could you draw it out then? For the sake of the stream? So you're, you're probably traveling more along this route, the blue one. Oh, okay. You just get you're, you're over in the east of the island. You definitely you left Port Castor. Okay. Traveled like 15 miles out of the city. You get the impression from that that some of the lords might live within the city, but the island itself is ruled by these five lords. You only know the name of two of them. Even. <laughs> right. Back to the situation at hand. Also, let me change the fucking music because it's definitely not on the right. Real quick, Robert, how would you delete that um, line? I used select, uh, I was in drawing tools, I used select drawing, and then I clicked delete, the delete okay. key. Cool, that's how you do that in the future, good to know. <laughs> Better music for this. So, plan is simple. Most of you can see in the dark, like myself, so I think we'll be... Trying to go a little bit quiet at first, if you can manage that. Do your best. Don't get killed. And we'll let you go at the end of this all. Captain oh. Flisk is the one in charge of this. Lizard folk. About half the crew will be the same. The rest, it's like goblinoids and bugbears and some other fuckers over there. I don't expect there to be more than a dozen. And if what I've been told about you is true, you should easily outmatch them. I'll be there as well, assessing you as well as fighting. Our task is simple. Kill all of them. Any questions? None. What is the weapons composition and armor? I couldn't tell you, but most sailors don't exactly wear heavy armor. You want to be able to have a chance if you end up in the drink, after all. You two would be at the bottom before you knew what to do, after all. I do have one question, though. The ropes, Robin. Captain. I'm listening. Is the death required? Or can we bring them in for proper justice? We're not the fucking police. These are pirates who've already stolen from us once, and they would not give you the same courtesy of mercy. We do not live by the judgment of what those would do to us, but what we do to those around us. If you manage to take one alive, good fucking luck, first of all. Second of all, I don't agree with that. You're here working for the same man I work for. You're being assessed for your performance in this task. Do well, and all will go well. Do poorly, and this will be the last job you work. Understood. Clearly. I'm just gonna tell you right now, she's a much higher level than you guys. Uh huh. Oh no, no, I don't mean it in the sense of a like, challenge. No. Don't worry, Belgaris. You won't have to kill anybody. You're not. You guys probably wouldn't have to put two and two. Wouldn't have to do much. Uh, multiplication to ever say that this person can most definitely kill everyone here. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> Named character, personal splash art. I'll try. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that you guys were like, oh, yeah, there's two giant, fu like, oversized minotaurs in plate armor, which I'm surprised none of you uh, picked up on some of the hints with that, but, you know. <laughs> but anyway. So I said, get we didn't comment on that. Anyway, get some sleep while you can. Be heading in before dawn. Two longboats should be suffice. Get out of my room. U.S. doesn't doesn't take a millisecond and but basically Sam gets all out. Thorn follows. As Balgoris leaves the room, he he turns towards her, gives her a bow, closes the door behind him. She does not look up and acknowledge you as you do this. 
I'm not going to lie, my friend. That woman? I yeah, like that one. <laughs> Naval captains can be a rough bunch, but once you get along and stay on their good sides, we'll be fine. She'd throw us in the ocean if you're a problem. Bad, you're damn right about, about that, that, you hear through the door. I suggest we hear I heard that elves have really good hearing, but I thought it was just a jest. Oh no. She could probably hear us all day long. They great, make great captains for one reason. It's hard to go mutiny against them. Yes, a couple of the sisters of my order were elves. Very intelligent. Good eyes as well. The head priestess, in fact, was Tabitha, a, a elven woman who uh, did a lot of teaching, and you definitely remember getting smacked on the knuckles with a ruler on many occasions in her classes. Oh. Yes, Malgors rubs his, Nick, Nick, his knuckles of phantom pain. Yeah. And I fondly remember any elven cavalry members or soldiers I served alongside. There were some, certainly. Yep. The majority of your the majority of your regiment would have been dragonborn, but there was humans, yes. there were elves, there were dwarves, all sorts. Oh yeah. None of the small folk. They didn't serve in the cavalry. They served in other no. roles. They were they were scouts, if anything. They were simply too small to really be a threat on horseback, because they just it's just a horse with a stick on it. At that point. No, but by God, on a wolf, could they ever fucking move? <laughs> you want to see a gnome riding a warg? I don't. <laughs> I do. Oh, exile. Those yes. things I sent you. I told you, I need outriders. You're sending me things in three different ways, so I'm trying to... No, I'm, I'm keeping all my conversations of game and game. They're all personal to you. <coughs> there is no, there is no um, one of those on the ship, but if you'd like to, during the night, uh, give me an investigation to see if you can... Actually, give me a survival check to see if you can find anything of that variety. Okay. Unfortunately, you get the sense that this is a pretty tight-run ship, and you find nary a mouse as you prowl about. Mm. You can go down to seven. <laughs> as the night passes. Y yeah. I'm keeping track. Every mm -hmm. time you say day. It is now the third, which reminds me, I need to actually advance the fucking date <laughs> on the calendar one second. Day forward, day forward. Tonight, there is a full moon. Neural, no, the closer moon is full, so there will be a bit of illumination. At least you wonder and hope to yourself as you watch two longboats get slowly lowered down into the water. The island itself is visible just, just below the horizon, like just very near the horizon, but just close enough where you don't think it's going to take you all fucking two hours before dawn to actually row there. So you all clamber aboard. I Could I get a marching order? Who is going in the boat with Susanna? Or to a boat? Uh, I guess our front line should be the first boat. Who's our front they're line? Gonna, they're going to land at the same time, so... Oh, okay. But I guess for our marching order... Oh, yeah, we, uh, let me get my weapons back equipped because they're no longer in the box. Yep, make sure all of your shit's equipped. Check your gear. It's about time we got moving. Climb, uh, climb check in. Check those spells. Yep, we're good. Spells are I'm good. good. Green skins and blue, get in with me. The rest of you and the other one. Hey, firm. I take a position at the front of the second boat. Gorse is slightly uncomfortable hopping in with the green skins. I don't need to look so disappointed there, bud. Mm. Orcs Canadian now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes! He's Canadian! He is. He's he been. Is. He's been. He's been. <laughs> Can you... Dude, you gotta do an Eastern accent. Please. Please. I, it's, I can try, I can try to be all like, hey there, bud. 
Yeah, just uh, sounds like oh, it sounds yeah, like you got a cool. problem over nothing there, bud. <laughs> yes. I have no problem with you, green skin. <laughs> well, Why usually when you rowing? don't have a problem with someone, you don't call them. Why not? You get to rowing. <laughs> Dumb. I, we we have been rowing. You're in the other boat. You didn't hear that. Well, you heard it, but you didn't. You weren't involved. It's like the it's like Person. the mafia scene. We're just having a conversation while we're rowing out on the boat. Pretty much. It takes you about twenty minutes to finally make it sure as you slowly pull the boats up. You can see a couple of lights dot about the horizon. The horizon on the islands. I'm gonna drag everyone in here. Oh. Several patches of shallow water seem to glow with each passing wave as bio as what you don't know but i know is bioluminescent algae agitates with each little ripple you have a couple of points of lights but overall the entire island seems to be covered in a dense misty fog it's a little to see we're gonna be moving to we've landed in the central part here there we go oh yeah you can't see anything basically yeah it's just dark well, you should be able to see around where your character is, and that's it, right? Oh my character. Yes, oh. I can see specifically around myself. Yeah. You can see that there's some light from down the island. You notice that there seems to be some sort of rocky structure kind of in the middle of the island. Basic, probably what this is actually, what all the sand and trees have kind of accumulated around over time. And around the corner, you see there is some light. For now, we're going to be entering a attempted moment for stealth. Okay. As you watch, Susanna uh, turns to you. Try and keep quiet for now. Let me get her stealth. Should... You want me to roll for stealth as well? Yeah. Nope. I didn't see no roll. I did. I, saw, well, I mean, I saw it privately rolled some dice and that's it. Yep. Yeah. So she is definitively hidden. She rolled a 24 for stealth. Mm. I think uh, that's how I, I do it. Just quietly to you, right? right? Yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and do this. Oh, no. Not the best, but. Oh, wait, hold on. No, not invisible. Where's stealth? Which one of these is stealth? Dodging, disease, ethereal, exhaustion. Yeah. How do I click? Oh, I right click it to clear it. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that disadvantage <laughs> sucks, dude. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going through the whole list. Just to make sure they're not broken. No, just to see which one is fucking stealth, and none of them are. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make them invisible. You don't even fucking know where she went. Alright. You got 50. Remember, control to drag to figure out your movements. Everyone's first movements, and the stealth rolls are. Oh god! <laughs> Good start. Gorus tries to hop out of the boat Orin... stealthily and just. Balgoris, you you and Torin almost completely just simultaneously crap. as you begin just... stepping over the edge, discover you didn't realize just how tall these boats were and miss your footing and go tumbling into the dirt a little bit. Fucking D-Day style, let's go. Uh, how do we move nope. our character tokens? You do not do it now. You tell me where you're moving. Oh, I'm trying to... Oh, select from there and then... Okay, so that does. Okay, cool. You can see those lines too. Awesome. Yep. That's cool. We did this. Yeah, yep, that works. I was going to do that. Yeah. Thorin? Um, how do I do that? Control. Thank you. And you can click to make waypoints while doing it. Control what? Control and click drag. Just control drag. Control yeah, drag. That, it, it basically draws a line. Like you can click from your character and. Yeah, I'm the orange one. Okay, you got it. What do I got? 30 feet? 35? Yep. yep. 30 feet. And I'm going to say that 
I'm gonna roll stealth for Lotus real quick. She's actually probably gonna pass it. Uh, no, she rolled a five. Ah. <laughs> she also loses her footing. And... D-Day. <laughs> Are you here? Who? Nico? Nicodemus. I put it on my list, so if you're gonna be stepping away, please let me know. Just saying. Say he moved over here. Oh, he did 26 minutes ago. Where has he been? Holy fuck. I swear, attendance is not our strong suit in this first day. This is the first kind of mo moment of calm passes you watch as an individual walks over towards the house. Doesn't appear to have spotted any of you yet, but more people seem to have been become noticing something is amiss with the loud noises they've been hearing. As you notice, towards the entrance to the cave, a couple of people seem to be making themselves seen. You get one more movement to set up. No one has yet seen you, though. It is clear that people know something is amiss. Do another stealth check. You can. You do not need to make another stealth check because trust uh -huh. me, you're not going to make it yourself any quieter. Yep. <laughs> that is. Uh, I am close to you, Thorin. I cast. Um, fear invisibility on Thorin. Thorin. You cross great greater invisibility on Thorin. Okay. Uh, it should not have been me, but I will remove that from myself. Uh, you are still concentrating on it, and it doesn't matter if you. <coughs> no, it was okay. Um, how do we? Which button is cast? I'm sorry to ask. Click on the spell. Okay. All right. Uh, I will cast. Oh. You watch as Balgors lifts up his flail. I cast Shield of Faith on myself, and then okay. I move up to uh, the other two to make our front line. That is your last bit of movements. Did you yep. guys do... Well, those who can see my Draconic, did you see it? Uh, I didn't. Yep. Vision? Why oh. I didn't see it. Oh, he doesn't have vision turned on. That's why you can see it. Okay. Mm. No, I'm just. I'm enjoying. What is going on? There, yeah, he's highly back. We're in the midst. Hey. Of Welcome back. And I bonus back. action. You're attempting to be <laughs> sneaky. And then I bonus action for an extra little stippy. That's how that works, not... right? No. No, it's okay. not. <laughs> I don't see my dark vision as an ability anywhere. You don't need to. You just you have, have it. Dark vision. Yeah, Dragonborn do, don't they? No, they don't. No, they do not. No. Not inherently. Dragonborn do not have dark vision. Need to be special. Most of you can see in the dark. Well, you and Ter you and Turbius can't see in the dark. Everyone else I can. can't see at all. It's okay. I'll hold your no, hand. All the, both the Dragonborn and you, Turbius. Yeah, yeah, you don't have dark vision either, but you should be able to see your character, right? Uh, just barely. And you can see the light elsewhere on the map. I can see what you can see. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but I don't know where I am. Right I here. Want to do that? I, I, I see. I, yeah, I see that. I mean, like in general. <laughs> Any last minute preparations? He watches mm -hmm. a lizard folk. Um, oak individual. Uh, how do I get the uh, plus from the AC? For uh... uh, it should have automatically applied if you cast it on yourself. I thought I did. Sorry, that is Pathfinder Dragonborn have dark vision. My bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna do it again and undo the spell to see second. if I can get it to fit. Oh, that's fine. Give me a second. Let me take a look at it. Okay. Let me figure out if it's set up to actually do it. Um, it should be applied, and if it doesn't, that's fine. We'll just remember it as applied. Uh, I was just going to undo the spell slot and then try it again, see if maybe that would fix it. Uh, uh, if you cast it already, it's unlikely to change, unless you didn't even have yourself targeted when you did it. Maybe I didn't. I thought okay, I did, so but... When you're, in, when you're in token controls, upper left-hand corner, right below the anvil, there's token controls. You got a little person icon. Make sure you have the select targets and select yourself. As this lizard folk kind of walks out into the open, hearing the crowd. Who goes there? <sighs> Fuck this. Where'd my thing go? Shit. He watches, he pulls out a lantern. Fiddles with it for a moment before. Ah! <laughs> he just kind of shouts at you. They're here! And I need everyone to roll initiative for me as I make a combat encounter. One moment. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can do it. Okay, one second. Am I good to roll initiative? Yes. yes. I'm just taking care of this real quick there, Exile. I'm not trying to double do actions. That's all good. Yep, yeah. mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. Assume spell slot, yep. Yeah. And cast. Yeah, it's a nice and roll. Some nope, roll didn't do it. Good. Oh well, I guess I'll have to remember my AC is too higher. <laughs> That's so weird. I'm also right, invisible I'm for an hour, so. Yep. Until you make an attack. Yeah. It doesn't say that anywhere in that spell. That's all. Where is That's an interesting my... amount of dice. Where's our initiative? That's supposed to be rolling initiative for everyone. Go to combat. In the second menu. Two. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hang on. This oh, first sorry. Yes, it does. Two. Sorry. I, I, I'm my distillist clack missed that. You're right. My bad, XL. Oh. My bad. Did it already do it? Okay. All right. And let me swap this music over. And apologies for everything being just a bit clunky today. Frankly, That's I drank okay. too much and I'm trying to just power through this. You're doing good. <laughs> we got people still learning the game, too, so I'm getting my shit fucking confused up. <laughs> I cast have a good time. <laughs> I mean, I am. Hell yeah. Hell, I just wish hell. my spell had gone through. That's the only thing. Mayamo. Nico. And at the top of our order, we have an individual that you do not actually see yet. In combat. He watches an individual comes running out of the corner. Get the captain! As he, shout, he shouts out, out at you. And he is going to use his... How many movement was that? It's 20. He's going to run up here and he's going to take the dodging action as he prepares for you guys to come at him. Okay. That's going to end his turn. Valgoris, you are up. Okay. Um... Valgoris, uh... actually, no, I don't want to move there. My horse will move there. Thank you. And then he will. So target the guy you want to attack. If you right click, you should be able to select him as target from that as well. But I recommend okay, I right clicked him. And then let's make an attack. You have rocks. You do not have him targeted. You'll oh. know when he's targeted because there will be things mm -hmm. next to him. You have to right click and then a secondary menu pops up that you can click on. Or you click on the targeting select targets, which is right below the regular select token thing in the upper left hand corner. When yeah, I have the... that. I have token controls and then select or select targets and then click or click and drag to select multiple. 
Okay. Is he targeted now for me? Yes. Well, no, he's still not targeted by you. He's targeted by Quirky Scratch and Roxby. How do you target? For some reason, he's still not... I don't know why it's not allowing me to target him. That me. Are you... That's weird. Now Torin has him targeted. Now Torin has the other guy targeted. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry I'm messing this so up. Just, so just select targets on it. Click it when you got the red fucking arrows on either all the corners. Of the gun it's not doing that every time I click. What That's What does your upper left-hand corner look like? Are you on select targets or select tokens? Uh Oh, select tokens. My Easy bad. Targets. Yep. Look for the ball. There we go. Harry, now you can tell you're targeting. What are you doing? <laughs> oh God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank God you're a maintainer and not a pilot. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, roll into attack. <laughs> Come on. So click it. You don't spam it. Go into oh. the chat log now and press the attack button on the last one you clicked. Oh. My bad. Okay. Thorin, please don't add shit to it while you're in the midst of this. I it literally just randomly popped up. I didn't click on anything. You can check my stream. All right. <laughs> Normal attack. It just Number. said that's that's a hit. click on damage. Damage. Yeah, I literally just said configure how my breath weapon works. Six damage, nice. All right. Wait, that was uh, uh, that was supposed to be a disadvantage, but I digress. It doesn't really matter in this context. My apologies. I'll remember nope, that next was, time. That was my mistake. My mistake. Um, you have your bonus action. If there's anything you wish to do with it. Mm. Oh, I should hit him with booing blade. Oh well, never mind. Continuing on. Okay. Uh, so you can click in the comment and you can either end your turn, or in this case, I will end your turn. Roxby, you're up. Yep. Thank you. I would like to move here. Okay. All right. And for my turn, where where's my information? Oh, that's not my spells. I would like to cast Spiritual Weapon. Spiritual summon weapon. my Milwaukee Hammer. All right, where's where's your hammer going? I'd like to summon it here. It's hammer time. That's within, yeah, that's within 20 meters. Where, where 20 feet. Yep. There you go. And let me just... And that goes into your initiative, so it makes an attack as it comes in. Target the guy and do it. Yeah, I'll click target. He is targeted. I am rolling. All right, I have enough time to go to the bathroom. Yeah. He wants an auto miss, right even back. though that was supposed to be a disadvantage. It doesn't really matter. So you missed in either case. Yeah. The hammer swings. Um, that's, it misses. That's your bonus happened. action. What is your action? Um, I thought Just the action was summoning. Nope. Spiritual weapons a bonus action to summon. Oh, okay. However, then as I'm you in... cast spells, a bonus action. You the only you can only cast if, if you want to cast another spell. You can only do a cantrip. Oh, okay, cool. Then in that case, I think it is. I'm gonna toll him. Toll the dead. Excellent. He is yeah. damaged, so we'll be using the D12, the versatile damage option, if he is. Yeah. Hit. So, so was it? I do damage or do saving throw? I got it. I have to. Okay. And he fails. So I damage other, and just do normal? Formula. Other formula. Or no, no other. regular damage. My mistake. Regular damage. Oh. Well, I did other formula anyways. 1d8. Right. Hang on, I gotta do this one manually just because of how it's set up right now. But you definitively did some damage. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Next up, this individual. Who I'm gonna need to figure out where you are. Wait, which one? Yeah, this guy is Oops. going to run his full movement up here. Damn. And he's gonna take out his light crossbow and he's gonna fire right at you, Belcoris, because you're the closest to him. Okay, just remember my AC is now 20 for all intents and purposes. Is I there tried. a way I can turn their torches down? It's so bright. Give me a minute. 
Uh, he rolls a natural one, so it's not even relevant. But here, I'll turn off. I lift my purchase. shield up. Yeah, just ping goes right off the shield. No harm done. Here, I'll Ooh, turn off that's one. That's a little little better. Thing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's only that bad because there's so much mist on the map. There's two layers of mist right now. Okay. Um, and that's going to be the end of his turn. It's now Lotus's turn, which I'll take because I have it. So I'm going to have her go over here. And she is going to target this guy. Excuse me. Bandit baby. Right clicking. Uh, it's getting laggy. Very laggy. And I'm trying to figure out why. But it wasn't doing this last week. She is going to. She never prepared spells. That doesn't matter in this context. I don't care. She is going to cast. That would be such a flex, but I'm not going to do that. Um, she's going to cast. <clears throat> Sorry, I realized it's on my. Uh, I realized one of the abilities is a hockey. My bad. Heat metal. Let's see his didn't actually on do save. Anything. Does he succeed? He does, but that was supposed to be a disadvantage because he is wearing metal armor, so let me run that one more time. And he passes both times, so don't uh so I think he takes half damage, right? Let me remember how heat metal works. Yeah, you're still privately yeah, he rolling just, no, your he dice. Just, he just he just takes the damage. Yeah, that's fine. I know, okay, I know. Just want to make sure. So he does just take the 2d8 damage. So that's seven points of damage applied as you watch his armor begin to slowly grow, glow red hot. Um, I don't want Tor you targeted. Let me just do this manually because I have too many people targeted. I have myself targeted. <laughs> there we go. I love whacking myself. Yeah, please <laughs> untarget everything. <laughs> All right, and that is going to end Lotus's turn. Next up, I believe it's this guy, right? Yeah. So you watch a rather large-looking bugbear runs out of the encampment and turns to face you guys. And he is going to make a javelin attack once again against you, Belgoris, because you are just the closest one there. That's my job. Use that AC. Well, you definitely didn't need to use that AC this round as the javelin goes sailing right past you. Yep. All right. And with this, you want you. Let me just add these people. They're going to come in the next round. So I'm just... next up. Yes. <clears throat> you see absolutely nothing occur. None of you have passive perception to roll as high as she rolled herself. Mm -hmm. And this is going to have a sneak attack bonus. And yes, I'm counting this as a rogue weapon. As you hear a single pistol shot ring out through the nights. As a. Why do I still have Balgoris targeted? I deselected you like three times and somehow I still have you targeted. And it happens. So that's nine points of damage plus sneak attack. Uh, which I'm just going to roll as. Should be. It's another five points of damage. Watch, this guy's getting hammered pretty hard, actually. Why is it so laggy? Was there a third party getting involved? Nope, that was Susanna. And she's effectively the third party. Pretty much. Um, and she's going to just roll another stealth check real quick as, as her bonus action. Okay, only 16. So she's actually not necessarily hidden from you guys right now. So you can actually... You notice that she's kind of hiding in the corner back there. Okay. That uh, she must be around the corner. Uh, Turbius's turn. Uh, 
Welcome back, Justin. Uh, my movement has been hampered as now there is another one of the party in the way. Yeah, um, you do have to kind of... It counts as difficult terrain to go through another person, so it's 10 feet of movement to go through Lotus. So I think you actually... Can I do the space for you? Yeah, you have, you have enough to get to here if you want to. Yeah. I have 40 feet of movement. And you have more than enough to get to here. There's more than enough room to get to Remember, you can click when doing that. You can click while still holding control, and then you can continue dragging and we'll go further. Is there a way to make that temporary thing like a cone? Like, I know there's the measurement tools for the cone, but... I don't it, know how when you have a spell that. That, what, that has that, there will be a template that will be placeable that you can yeah. use. That would be 35 with difficult terrain. That would be. See? All right, yeah, like my drawing. That, 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 was, that was just the measurement tools for my Curbius, own. what are you doing? I will enter rage. You would like to rage. Press your rage button. I love this just, that it's just a screaming mouth. <laughs> All right. And what now? I do have them selected, right? Uh, you do. You have... The lizard folk selected, maybe? You do now, yes. This guy squares up before you, just kind of like. <laughs> He's a big dude, but you're big. <laughs> you're a big boy. Fuck. <laughs> that was a miss. That is unfortunately a miss. Would you like to. I will allow you to retroactively make that a reckless attack if you want to do it again and get your advantage for it. Uh, your characters. No, I uh, didn't want to because I have three people in my face pretty much now. That's not a uh, invalid description. So you take your extra attack then? Yes. So many of you got extra attack. See, that, that is, that is very damage. much a hit. Yeah, 22. That is very much 15, 15 points damage. Of damage. Nice. This guy is. You bring that sword down, and he is just in front of you as you slash across his chest, kind of like Zoro kills that one guy in One Piece, and he just like stumbles backwards, standing still, but. That one guy. Him. You just That one him. guy. Yeah, I never actually watched One Piece, okay? I've seen scenes. That's it. Yeah. That has happened so many times in One Piece. Oh, I've Insert. seen it happen at least exactly Insert once generic. in the Netflix series. Insert generic enemy. 3,144. It, it, it was a friend of the main character that I was thinking of. Mm. I just like that Turbius is using a traditional cavalry weapon. <laughs> He's using an Odachi. Yeah. He's using an Odachi. <laughs> yes, that's a cavalry weapon. It's meant that, to be used on horseback. Uh, uh, is, is that, is that the end of your turn, Turbius? That is the end of my turn. I don't know how to end right. my turn. Quirky scratch. You go to the combat tracker and click the arrow. Oh. Oh yeah, guys, you can actually set it to where like the the game will the, the game will be like it'll be your turn next. Yeah. Well, uh, this other than that, this person is kind of shocked. What did I don't? He doesn't. Let me. Be, they need to get Here, close I'll to do him. Commentator mode. That's what I have mindset too. Easy hit. Roll damage. Oof, 10 points of damage. Nice. This guy is definitely starting to look pretty hurt now. Do you have a bonus action you want to take? Uh, or can I take? Well, can I take two actions with cantrips while I'm concentrating? No. If you had a bonus action ca casting cost for one, then you can cast one, two cantrips, but if also, you have a bonus action cost spell, you can cast that also. You can also right click on the chat messages, combat tracker, character things all to bring them up in a separate thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. right click on any of the windows to bring them up as a sec separate window, the great. That's uh, not a fucking day house. But that's the end of Okay. Torin, you're up. Oh, hang on. 
Yeah, so I set it to that mode. So where are you going, Torin? Excellent. Only Torin can see Torin. Is that that's thirty feet, right? I don't see your measure, but yeah, there. That's within. Yeah. Uh, make your attack, I believe. Hang on, let me read visibility again. You have advantage on melee attacks right now, and you won't drop invisibility because it's greater invisibility. So, uh, I did, don't I? You have advantage. I have advantage on melee attacks. You do because you are invisible. They do not see you. It's hard to defend against something that which you cannot see. I think mm. I'm going to use my breath weapon on a 15 foot cone. I'm going to try and direct it. I, I think. Let me let me just do a quick measurement. Uh... Oh, yours is a cone. Nice. Yep, it's that oh. gold dragon heritage. So that that hits all of them, right? Something like that. Uh, yeah, it would hit all of them. I can drop you a template real quick if you'd like to see. Can you see that? Yeah, you got one. Yes, I can. Yep, all right. That's what uh, for. We'll use my. It's tar not... Target all three of them. Target all three of them. Okay. Yep. How do I? Technically, uh... it's not supposed to hit the last guy. I don't care. It's within the range as far as I'm concerned. By the way, Warlord Odachi were traditionally not used Hold as on. cavalry weapons. They were not, though. Oh, I thought they were. They, they were infantry weapons. They were. Here's what you give the really big dude. It says I have no uses remaining for it. That's weird. Uh, it's possible that you I never reset it after you use it last. Uh, Why is my game so lag? This thing so laggy. I'm really confused by that. Um, let me just reset your usages. Because you most definitely do have a use. There you go. Fire away. Oh, shit. Let me just wait. Let me do DC, uh, the concentration check on all of them. Wait, why did it? It should have done it the other way. It didn't. I don't know why. You didn't select them all. You had them selected at one point, but then it stopped. Okay, let's try that one more time. Yeah, select all of them. <coughs> I can't select those measurements if you want to delete them. Um, you have to that. just switch. You just have to switch the template measure rule and then you can. But yeah. Okay. And ignore that you don't have a use if it lets you. Otherwise, I'll just give you another one. It didn't work. One. Select all three. Cast it. Now I do the. Why would? Why is it recording that way? All right. Well, I'm just gonna do the con saves for all of them then manually. Didn't so work. Throw first one. Yeah, something's wrong with it. I'll fix it later. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, I've got it. I've got it. I've got the damage. In the no, 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 <laughs> not the damage, the con saves. What if? It, what happens if you press the con save button, actually? Do that. It's gonna roll for yourself, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, the lizard folk fails, the bandits... Um... Let me know if it's a critical hit or not. Like, like basically, basically, if they, basically, if they critically fail, fail, that's the only way. Yeah. Uh, so that's a fail from that one. Now for the bugbear. Uh, that is a fail on all accounts, so roll damage. Hell yeah. Nice. Nine points of damage applied to all three of them. And he watches the lizard folk becomes completely immolated in flames and begins just kind of flailing about wildly before slowly just <laughs> falling to the ground. <laughs> that one is dead. So the other guy's going to him out. Uh, that area is not... It's, it's, it is considered like an instantaneous flame, so there's some burning like bits of leaf litter and stuff on the ground, but it's not considered like a hazard level of fire. You didn't napalm the ground. No, no you I didn't, didn't napalm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was just making sure. You you blow very short-lived magical fire. You don't. You're not a flamethrower. You don't. <laughs> yeah, you are not a true dragon. <laughs> okay. Um. I so that's your first visible. action. And I. 
So because you only because you used your action to cast a spell, you cannot use your extra attack because you did not make an attack. Yeah, roll. no, I know. I'd have to use my action surge. You would. You are still hidden, and they're very fucking confused as to what the fuck happened there. <laughs> well, one of them... are... wait, wait, did you hit yourself with that? No. You? No. I don't know where you got hurt then. All right, I, I'm really sorry. I gotta take. All right, I, yeah, I'll end my mm -hmm. turn there. Serbius. What? Oh. What's your AC? Right. 15. Okay, thank you. Not the hell. What a terrible assumption you've already made. What a terrible assumption they made. Nothing was there, and now they're on fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. I mean, QS literally gave you a very good uh, ability. Mm. Yeah, you uh, you basically put me in the then the position to fuck them up without them knowing what's going on. The fuck gave you the address to their back door and they don't even know it. Yep, and I have multiple attacks that are capable of hitting the remaining two. As you were, right? Thanks, so. I'm back. What is the need? Torin, do you have anything else left? No, I'm going to end my turn there. Okay. Uh, let's just say you ended it. It's another individual, another bugbear actually comes flying out of here and seeing, well, a minotaur in front of him and his dead, a dead lizard folk. He's going to make an attack against you there. Just make sure I'm not targeting anyone else. Oh yeah, and Torin, set your health back. You did accidentally target yourself. You damaged yourself. Make a javelin and throw. And a 19 does indeed hit against you, Torin. You take half damage. Uh, you're going to take half of... Two. Well, four, technically. So two. Two points of damage to... Terbius as he kind of grazes you gently. That is nothing. Just clip it. At, at, at the bottom of the round. Many others around the island have certainly heard the commotion. And are now going to join the fray. Oh, and going back up. I have those spells. Whoever he is. What are you? This one. That's all you see. He's going to use his action now. Dash. That brings him up there. That's the end of his round. Let me remove you from the combat tracker. Now this guy, which is... Uh, that one. Gonna come on out in in using the action is gonna run up here and be very surprised to see a drow hiding in the darkness next to him. This next one is going to also come climbing out and is not gonna use his action. He's gonna hide still. And this final one is which one is this? Oh, that one. Oh, okay. Is going to become visible. That. Let's hear some commotion on the ship. And finally, does this person not get added to the combat tracker? No, they just rolled really good initiative, so they're going to be coming later in the round. Got it. Okay, we just lost our vision on everything else, or I did. You shouldn't have. You okay? What do you see? I. Um... It I'll looks see normal it. on my screen for your vision. He did not. He's on the combat tracker anymore. Like, oh, he is. Actually... Oh, he is. I see him. No, you're in the combat tracker. He's in there. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no. I see. I see it. Okay. Are you good? Yep. Yeah. If you ever lose sight of yourself in the middle of combat, just click on your character again. 
right. Like Top it, of the round and the I mean, it was trying to, It was trying to show me what you would see for some reason. That shouldn't be able to do that. Well, this bandit captain is definitely going to make it. Where did the music stop? Oh, that's what we've been hurting. Hmm. Makes sense. Here we go, some more music. Yeah, it's not. It's going to attack you because he's right in front of you. Oh, um, yeah, most he's... certainly. Why? And so he's going to take his first attack against you. Uh-huh. And a 10 certainly does not hit. He's going to take a second attack again. First slash with the scimitar is a miss. Second one is also a miss. You're perfectly parrying each of these attacks. Final attack. It's also a miss. Man, you just dodge all three of his attacks perfectly successfully. Our weapons are... <laughs> He's just trying to hit me, and I'm just perfectly blocking with my shield on every strike. <laughs> that is exactly what's happening. Now, where are you? I thought that was you. Sorry, it's... Remember, I see darkness for these guys, too. I cannot see what they're doing very clearly. Oh, no, you're fine. You've got right, a line uh, of electricity, don't you, there, Elgoris? I do, but unfortunately, it would have to be a line from me, and um, no, not I a really I good know. line I'd like to use. But yes, I do. I also have a couple more AOEs. Cool, we got. Well, it is your turn. So what are you doing? All right. Uh, thing as our uh, Minotaur compatriot is, uh, he might be in a bad situation. Uh, you all watch as a uh, as Valgoris is sitting there blocking these attacks and he's holding back one of the Simtar strikes on his shield and you watch as his flail starts to glow this red blood color and then he just points in a general direction and in a doing arms of Padar. Tell it no, continue your thing. I was just saying I was excited because <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing. Okay. You watch as he just... The flail just... And he just points it directly. The handle in the direction over by... Uh, oh god, what is our minotaur's name? Tiber Tiberius. Tiberius. His direction. In the crowd of foes next to him. And just... In his almost blood... Almost this dark, draconic sounding accent. Just yells out... Arms the pit Cast it and then plop, plop the template down where you'd like to do it. Or there is, uh, it doesn't. The template. It's not showing me the template. I will create a template for it. One moment, because it should have had that. It was in the PHP. Why? Targets. Radius. Oh no! Never mind. Ten. Can I cancel that action? No, no, no. That's bad. That's bad. Oh shit. Yeah, that's that's That'd fine. But I fixed the spell for future reference. Yeah, no, that's ten feet from me. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm thinking of the other uh, no, hunger of Hadar. The, ra the range of it is. It says oh, yeah. from you. Yep, yeah. Ten, yep, ten feet from you. Not a good idea. I wouldn't want to do that. That would that would uh, hurt some people. My apologies, but uh, I will do something else to help him. Uh, I will choose him. Oh no, he's dead. But how do I do? There we go. That's multiple. And I will select this one as well. Okay. You can also and delete your actions from the chat there, uh, or the three bright dots in the top right-hand corner. Yeah. Thank you. And I will use Bane. Bane. Nice. Oh. It. it should apply to all of them automatically. It'll, it'll drop this, but he's in more danger than I am right now. Yep. We will drop concentration on that and start concentrating on Bane. Understood. Charisma saving throw. normal no i need to i need to do them manually i think i'm gonna have to okay. i'm gonna do some more research the on dc that is 15 dc is 15 okay first one saving throw and that is a success 
is not baned. Second one. Mm. Is a success. Third one. Another success, unfortunately. 15, 16, 17. Damn. Fortunately, none of them are baned. Oh, well. I tried. Tis what it is. Mm -hmm. Cause that would be your action, so. Yep, and... Yeah, that's it. Well. Well, you're not Luckily, dying. Shield of Faith is a bonus action. <laughs> but it's an actual spell, so I can't do it. <laughs> Alright, rocks B. That's the wrong button. I don't want to target myself. You want to target yourself? I want... No, I don't want to target myself. I want to do this. Easily enough to shuffle on over. I'm going to attack him with my Warhammer. Make an attack. I target him. Warhammer. And attack. That is unfortunately going to be a miss. That's okay. As he deftly dodges out of the way of your strike. All right. And for my bonus action, I'm going to target a teammate. Yes. And where you're, is my spouse? What are you going to use? I'm going to use Shield of Faith. And your spiritual weapon has disappeared. All right. Just so you're on the same page. So who did you cast that on? On Turbius. <clears throat> Turbius, okay. That's why I made sure to select him too. Problem. Next up. Well, this guy is going to move up this way because he still can't see Torin there and is going to attack Turbius. This kind of last of his strength here, basically. He's going to make a scimitar strike against you. And has a natural, a massive miss with a natural two. Is he just doesn't even connect? He's just too far away. Just swings wide. Oh, puny bandit. Yes. Who got shield of faith? Sorry. Uh, you, uh, Turbius did. Turbius. I don't think it applied to me. But... Why can I not? It it doesn't matter. There it is. This guy. Okay, he's going around there. You can't see him still. That's you as well. Also going around this way. Let's see. It's Lotus' turn. What is Lotus concentrating? Heat metal, right. So she's going to apply the heat metal damage again, first of all. Roll. Roll back up until I find that. Somewhere near the top of this fucking list. It's 10 points of damage. It's the bandit captain. He's looking fairly hurt right now, but definitely still alive. That's a. I think it's a. Let me double check heat metal. I don't remember everything off the top of my head. Is spiritual weapon meant to be marked as a concentration? Because it's missing that mark. I'll double check that. But you had a concentration thing on it. It doesn't you show that on. You know what? I actually, you know what? You're fucking right. Spiritual weapon is not concentration. My fucking mistake. You can use your bonus action to control it. It's not concentration though. So you've already used your bonus action to cast shield of faith. So it it can't attack that last turn. But it is there. My mistake. Okay. Nope. I just wanted to make sure. That's Lowe's cool. turn. No, that's that's exactly why everybody has questions. Exactly. No. Nope. Go there the process. There we go. This one's targeting Turbius because obviously it's in front of him and is going to make an attack with his Morning Star. And uh, what is your AC right now, Turbius? 15, with the plus two? With the 17. plus two 17? That is a miss. Yeah. Ah, puny Ben. Hell yeah. Text. That would suck. It is interesting to have the fight commentator as the combat theme for when it's your turn. It, it, it's useful though if you're like halfway distracted. That 
that's a hit. Ooh. That's a sneak attack. Uh, that, that wasn't actually sneak attack. attack, but it was 19 points of damage. Jesus. And he killed this one guy. Might we have to piss this woman off. Uh, she's got she's got a certain special weapon. That's um, technically she. I will say this: hint, she would have healed, mm -hmm. but she didn't. Oh, was, she oh was, one of those. Um. And now we're back to Turbius. Well, this man in front of me is about to get donked on as I enter another. Fucking so raping, you don't need to do it again. Yeah, I know, but I'm s i am was gonna say I'm I'm entering a fit of recklessness as I swing. Take the attack with advantage, make a reckless attack. Swing but that was swing. Man is getting dominated. Twenty three for hit, hell yeah. Or whatever these mean. 13 Here. points of damage, and describe how you murder this fucker. <laughs> As the two next to me proceed to swing downwards, I drop my sword crossways and throw their blade up as I slash neatly across that man in half. So you watch as he falls down in, in two halves. As he falls down in two halves. Darth completely balls mortified. Down. Um, and as I and as I and as I turn to the next foe and swing again, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's a definite hit. Wait, no, you tar that targeted the same guy again. Oh, do you want me to? Yeah, roll it again because it's a different AC. You're not supposed to be at advantage because I think you. Let me. Reckless I think you're only still. Supposed to take one reckless attack a turn. Oh. That is yeah, reckless your for first, your first oh. attack and turn can be reckless, otherwise it's normal. <coughs> yeah, that'd be a pretty OP if you could back to back. Get advantage on every attack. Yeah, it's it's once per round. It's only on your first attack. So but, just roll regular to hit. Okay. So you want me to re-roll a third time? What did you roll the last one? Uh two eighteen. Oh, fuck it, you hit. Fuck it, you hit. <laughs> At that point, if you roll two 18s, yes, you hit. Roll damage. A 15 that time. Has nice, hefty damage. This guy is... You slash across his chest, and he is looking... He is looking... You need bandits. Ricky scratch you up. But uh, Quirky Strash can't really kill anyone there, so she is gone. With that, I'm going to have to take my leave and head to my other session. Sorry, right, ma'am. We'll catch you later. Yep. I will see you guys later. Uh -huh. Have a good one, Nico. You too. Then uh, don't. Was he in like four D and D sessions at the same time? Just fucking. Apparently, I don't know. It, it somewhat annoys me that he didn't tell me about this, about this until the first uh... session zero. But I don't. I don't care. I enjoy having him in the game all the same. You know. Yeah, and he's fun to play with. So. Yes. No more. I'm just trying to figure out why Tristan is so goddamn quiet right now. Uh, the lizard folk is deceased. That one. Yeah. <laughs> I love the description. He is a with fireball. <laughs> I want to make sure. <laughs> that is a hit. Roll damage. 20 fucking 6. Five. Ooh. Five points of damage? It's alright. Um, he's he's relatively full health still, you know. <laughs> Uh, do you have a bonus action you would like to use? Mm. Uh -huh. Don't think I can do any of the rebels. Fox slowly begins to lift a little bit. Yeah, those are actions. I believe. Yeah. Uh, you might require those to be a bonus action. We'll see. That's the hellos.
Hvad fad mig her? Hvad er det nu? Alright, since I am still invisible because you have not broken concentration. Oh, and I don't have one too. Cool. How much should his a fan? Do you, does your character speak Draconic out of curiosity? Yes. Cool. Um, just for roleplay references. Uh, brain fart. I am gonna move myself over here. Pre-measured 20 feet. I like how you're, like, slightly askew. You're, yeah, I know. character's, like, five degrees off of straight. <laughs> Giggity. Remember, you have a vanish. Yep. And I am going to attack once with an advantage <laughs> roll of my glaive. 15 hit. Uh, 15 does not hit as he manages to parry it away off of his shield. Just barely misses. And I can make a second attack out of that, right? Yep. That hits, I'm assuming. 23 definitely hits. Roll damage. Uh, is that advantage? Uh, no, no, that's not Damage, is not, sorry, damage is not an advantage, no. I'm sorry, my bad. Man, you Three. nearly got the 10 there. You get a good slash in on him with your with your little pokey stick. Okay. And I will end my turn there. Okay. I don't think I could do anything else anyways. It is now his turn, and seeing that something in front of him just attacked, he is gonna make an attack against what he where he thinks you are. Sixteen or higher. Uh Rolled a 12. That is definitely not higher. So you... He takes kind of a wild swing and you just kind of... Out of the way. Without much issue. You're already aiming. And <laughs> that's going to be his way turn. Way too he high. Knows he knows there's a threat near him. Which one is that? Again, like, these aren't showing me the thing properly. There we go. Emerging from the darkness... Another individual appears. It's still showing me at 48 hit points. I think. There you go. Uh, it's going to take a shot at Torn because he's right there. And he's going to have advantage on the attacks he used Reckless last turn. And that is a crit! Ooh. <laughs> uh, so you get 13 points of damage divided by 2 for 6. As he gets a bolt just right into your side. Uh, that guy's dead. Was that at me? Or Balgoris? No. Nope. That was at Tur uh, Turbius. Oh, Turbius. Which yeah. I forgot he had just left. Uh huh. Another Ooh. another one emerges That's from here. And he doesn't have a attack. Or no, he does have a javelin. He's going to take another javelin throw at Turbius. Also advantage. For a hit. Yep. Uh, the double-edged sword. Two points of damage. This one is over here and is going to attempt an attack against Susanna. And is going to miss uh, against Turbius and Susanna, because I forgot to untarget Turbius. I noticed that as soon as he disconnected, my game stopped lagging. Uh, <laughs> he's back. Yep, I am back because I'm already pissed off from that other session. Okay, well, so instead, I'm going to come back, back here where I was actually having fun. Thank you for joining us. You were just hurt, but you're okay. Um, not badly. A guy got a uh, bolt in you and scored a crit, but it did like six damage. This one's going to run up and... Uh, again, like, the big fucking Minotaur standing over the corpses of his friends. He's going to attack you again, Turbius. I mean, I can't really see Kirky, so... Uh... And that's another crit. Not, not to mention the charred it. corpse of the, the lizard folk, which would be a little... Yeah, exactly. Like that's another 12 for six points of damage to you. How hurt are you? 
Not that bad. You're okay. And now, top of the order, is our Bandit Chief's turn. Um, seeing that he is getting kind of overwhelmed here, he's going to just kind of look for an easier target, and he's going to try and attack you, Roxby. He's going to make his two scimitar attacks against you. First attack. I use my reaction to pose disadvantage on those attacks. On both of them? Uh, what what what's the ability? I'm I'm uh, sharing it now. Give me one second. Let me find it. Should have just gone over. Yep. On one. Yep. On an attack roll. Okay. Or on That's, the attack. All right. Well, let me roll that again. He hit on his first attempts. Unfortunately, he just he actually rolled even higher on his second one, so he does. God like, damn. So he rolled over 19 blood times? Well, he, ro he rolled a natural 15 and then a rat natural 18. Jesus. My AC is 19. Uh, Make your con check for... Wait. Why is it... Oh, because I have... Uh, click on... Mm -hmm. You should have a con save thing that just popped up in the chat. Click on that. 15. You succeed. You keep your spell up. Okay. Um, that was his first scimitar attack. He's now going to attack you again. Yeah, I can only use it once. Uh, misses with a nine. Now his dagger attack. Uh, natural two for a miss as well. You After that, he managed to get you with the first hit, but in your kind of response to staggering back, you brought your shield up and were able to shrug off any additional blows. Where's Sliss going? I tried, Roxby. I tried. That's not your fault. Watches this other individual kind of just lurks at the side, just examining the setting. Besides, he is going to run over here. That is the end of his turn. Algoris. Okay. All right. There we go. He is selected. I want to get rid of this guy. He's one of the stronger combatants on the field. You've quickly gathered that this might be oh, yeah. an officer on the ship. Uh, rank means strength in games. Let's try it. Bearing smite. Go for it. All right. The attack. Okay. I don't know what that is. That's a hit. Just barely. Fuck yes. Uh, let me All make right. a con save for him real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. The uh, DC con save. And he fails it. Okay. And damage. here's the damage for just the regular hit. Hey, was... Two points. Oh, no, wait. That was not the weapon attack. Let me double check the steering smite, because that might be broken. 1d6 yeah, a... fire damage. Yeah, that was just the, the thing for that. That's just the smite. Roll your right... Click on your standard weapon and just click damage. Copy. Wish it was in the same area. It's in the same character sheet? Yeah, yeah. Hey, no, I'm not mad. Trust me. I think it's still a better system Fantasy Grounds because I didn't have to pay nearly $300 for it. You, you shut up, okay? <laughs> Roll your damage. You bring your hands on that? this poor motherfucker. Boy, you had those spent that much, if not more. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I did my research. Six points of damage. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I think is it, it's a bonus action to cast Stringing Smires out a part of your action. I can't remember. Uh, let's see. At the start of each of uh, its turns until the spell ends, the target spell must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, it takes a d6. Okay, I will keep that in mind. On a successful save, the spell ends. Okay. But I am concentrating on it while it is in effect. That is, that is correct. Um, do you have anything else you're doing here? Uh, that was it. Okay, rocks B. I'm just going to double check to make sure I have them. Yes, he is selected. I'm going to bring my Warhammer on him. Do it. 
Attack. Nope. Fortunately, yeah, that was almost a crit. And I'm gonna it's tell my spiritual weapon to do the same. Go for it. So summon, tell a spiritual weapon to attack. And that's it. Oh, I th it only has a plus one? That's a damn shame. What is your... Let me double check that it's supposed to... No, it should have a plus three. One second. So it would have hit. Roll damage. I'll fix it. Okay. Rolling damage. It's supposed to have your spell casting attack modifier for it, but it Max doesn't. Max damage. Max damage? Hell yes. He gets oh, hit with a good thing. strike he from the Milwaukee. Looking, he is breathing heavily and just kind of is very close. Now let me fix your spiritual weapon attack. Because you have spellcasting ability plus three, so that should apply to it. You also... No, you did prepare your spells. Excellent. I made sure to organize them in my hot bar too. So I have my melee stuff as hot bar one, my can chips and all my other like forced ones, and then yeah. my set ones. Yep. Excellent. Well, that is all taken care of then. And with that, that's your uh, your action, your bonus action. Unless you want to walk away and risk an opportunity attack, I believe that is your turn. No, I think I'll be fine standing here. Okay. I don't like how when it centers it, it centers it to my screen, which is actually between my two monitors because I dragged the window across. This guy... He's going to go there. And he's going to take an attack with his light crossbow. Kind of scanning around, he's going to look at... He's going to notice the cat that hasn't se that seems to be just kind of hiding amongst the trees and is going to take an attack against you, Corky Scratch. And that is a hit with a 15 for max damage. As a bolt just right into your, right into your lower left abdomen. Uh, make your con uh, concentration check. His mic's muted. No, I'm trying to get there. You failed concentration. That should have auto dropped your spell, but it didn't, so I'll fix that after session. And with that, Torin, you are no longer invisible. That's Holy the shit, there's a guy pain. there. That's the significant <laughs> pain of the events that have just transpired have caused the spell to drop. Alright, next turn. It's this guy. Or lady, based on the tits. Um character I have a whole bunch of random character reference on module. And I'm up here, huh? seeing around, noticing the closest threats. It's gonna make an attack against you, Torin, with her light crossbow, because these are all generic bandits. Not all of them. Uh that's 17 hits, I presume. Five points of damage to you, Torin. With that, Lotus is up. gonna go over here. He's going to target this one. You know what? No. No, she's not. Because Wea would not be doing that. Wea would be doing wild shaping into bear. Into <laughs> some A wild shaped druid. Hmm. Well, curious, out of curiosity, did my test roll show up? <laughs> yeah, no. bear. Bear's one of the best ones. Hey. Well, it's the best one she can do right now. It's the best CR1 that she can turn into. Oh, hey, it's a 3D model. Yeah, it is. Um, there's a whole bunch of different art. I can change Shadow. It. This is from the SRD, so they have all, like, all the SRD stuff, like, here's a deer. Have like three mm. have those kind of models, but then I also have tokens. Like here's a cat. There isn't one of the SRD, so I had to use one of the other thing for the token app thing, which is oh, a bunch that's of the, the ship cat. <laughs> yeah, he's little, little. He's looking at a ship. He's more the dock cat. Unsinkable Sam. 
<laughs> All right, and so this one right here, this bugbear, is quite happy to take another swing at you, Turbius, because he is right next to you and is definitely not going to try and go anywhere else. Thankfully, you don't have to deal with the surprise attack feature. Um, that's a 12. He actually misses. Uh. You parry his attack away. Now it's Susanna's turn. She's got her self occupied with this situation down here. Attack. You can also right click on your guys' character token to see how much health points you have left. Quickly. It's a 10. Uh, no cunning, no sneak attack with that one. And let me just check. Do I get anything yep, here? And it is only your character token. Good. And cunning action disengage is going to run over here. Darius, you're up. Uh, well, time to uh, crush a bugbear. Swing batter batter. This guy, he, you notice he's looking on his last legs as well. Just a normal roll. That's a 21. That hits, roll damage. Uh, he had four hit points, so you utterly clobber this fucker as he crumples to the ground. It's clobbering time. Absolutely. Uh... You have your movement still, and you have no one directly engaged with you. I'm gonna move down here, out Mr. Uh, Torin. Well, you could also move there and gain advantage with him. This counts as a movable tile. Okay. So, there you go. Alright, quirky scratch. I still have any extra attack. Uh, let me double check it. I think your extra attack might be against the same target. No, it's just attack nope, twice yeah, instead you, of you once. you just get a second one. Go for it, my mistake. Um. Uh, is that flanking? Can... That is flanking. Make it with advantage, even without reckless. That's a nice. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's a hit. Roll damage. 26 to hit. <laughs> you don't have to click it every time to roll damage, by the way. You can just go up with this. Oh. That's a 17 damage. damage. <laughs> uh, yeah. he's, he's not. Did that clock? Yeah, it did. Okay. So. Much Let me bless him. him a few times. <laughs> uh, it is now your turn, Quirky Scratch. So, which one hit Quirky? Uh, that would be... What? I think it was this one. Okay. Either that one or this one? It's one of the two. Oh, well. You have That's this right. guy in front of you. I don't see that guy. Yeah, there's no one. This guy in front oh. of you. Oh. There he is. Thank you. Third level. Ooh. I keep looking at your... Unfortunately, he manages to just dodge out of the way before it connects. Unlimited power! Okay. Any other things you can do? What are you concentrating on? Right now. Oh, uh, yeah, so that oh. failed. It didn't actually connect with anything. I didn't realize that I never targeted the guy. Hmm? I never targeted the guy. Uh, well, that's... Oh, the other guy took 17. Yeah. Okay, so this guy's dead too. My mistake. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you crushed that fucker too. The barbarian wrecking ball comes through. Yeah, yeah that's all I can do. Okay. Because yeah, if I want to do anything else, it would take a lower out a mouse action to grab. But you can still oh. move. Since he's fucking. Are you still wanting your turn? It's your turn now, Torrin. 
All right. Um, <laughs> I will. Let me do a measurement. Math, obviously. Obviously, I'll take a swing at this guy. Absolutely. Does he get an attack from me entering his range? No, because you walk once you it you don't get an opportunity attack from entering range. You do with Polar Master. You can do that when someone enters your range, but not when you enter their range. Yes, I'm Maybe I'm you... I'm checking for your sake. Just keep yeah, you went you went around this way, so you you be within range the whole time. Oh, and turns at the bottom left hand corner of combat tracker. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna do that. I just saw that. <laughs> Anyways, um, my attack normal. 16 hit. That does hit. Damage. Five. Yeah, it still hurts him. He still, still took out nearly half his health. He's a very basic bandit. Oh, I got another attack. Sorry. I got another attack. I was waiting for you to say it. Fighters, man. Does it hit? Yes. Basic bandit. Three, seven. Seven points of damage, and he's dead. You just walk up and with two strikes just send him to the ground. All right, I have. I move 15 feet. Do I still have movement? Yes, no. You have 20. You have 10 feet of movement still. Okay. One, two. And turn. The next three guys are all dead. <laughs> this bugbear is going to run up to you. And then I do I get an attack for entering? You get an attack range. of opportunity when it's here if you want to take your reaction to do it. I will take it when he's one up from there, if that's all right. Yep. Well, I think it has to be actually when they first enter your range. Oh, it is when they first enter my range. You're right. You're, you're right. Is that advantage or no? I don't think so. Regular mm. attack. Uh, Ten minutes. Yeah, unfortunately, he is able to get right past it, and he's going to attack you. I'm going to keep him in this tile. Why not? He gives Morningstar Strike against you. They only get plus four to hit, so it's not like they're... Roll with Sixteen or higher. Yeah, well, he rolled a four, so no, he does not hit you. <laughs> this one over here is going to run up back towards Susanna, who he was pursuing initially. It's going to make another Morningstar attack. With a natural two. God, these guys are rolling like shit. It's going to miss. And finally, uh, this guy, who is going to go to there. It's gonna and then I you. get attack you you only get back. one reaction per round okay so you do not get another attack you've already used your reaction for that. roll to two again anyway top of the order bandit captain uh sure. make a constitution saving save. throw yep uh let me just can you click the ability again so i don't have to and find it in yep, the list. Got you. I didn't want to cast it. I just wanted to share just, it. You just give yourself the spell slot back or I'll do it. <laughs> I got it. Okay. There you go. Uh, and he succeeds, so that is ended, unfortunately. Okay, and that ends my concentration on that. He needed a 15. He rolled a 15 plus 2. Okay. Yeah, now it happens. Turn. He's going to attack Roxby because Roxby is closest to him. And he is just kind of recklessly flailing about. I will expose disadvantage on one of those attacks. Okay. Disadvantage on the first attack. Uh, you rolled an 18 and a 19. <laughs> Good God. You know what? I'm going to stop doing disadvantage. Well, he rolled a 1 for damage, so maybe he affected that. Second scimitar attack. 
Oh yeah, do your concentration first. My spell breaks. Your spell breaks? What did you have? Yep. Oh, you had Guardian of Faith, uh, Turbius. That's the one. Yeah. So, let me just break cons. Out. You got it. Perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, and he hit with a, a dirty twenty on the second one. So now six points of damage. And he's Excellent. Are we sure dagger. that the reaction? Because I'm, I'm reading everywhere. Even in the book, it doesn't say that. You get one. So each turn, you get an action, reaction, bonus action, and movement. So when you use a opportunity attack, that counts as your reaction for that round. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, okay. It does say opportunity attack. Okay. Sorry, I was just confused about that. Yeah, that's just one of several things you can use for reaction. Yeah. No, I just want. I, again, learning the game. Just wanted to make sure. And he misses with his dagger, thankfully, because you um. You got hit quite Feeling a bit, it. dude. You're hurt. Feeling it. Now it is the captain's turn. Uh -huh. And he is going to first make a swing at you with his battle axe. Uh, and that's a hit. Damage. Six points of damage. Second attack, battle axe. That is a hit with a dirty uh, 21. Damage. That applies damage. You add. Uh, and now he is going to uh, lunge towards you and attempt to bite. That is a hit. And that's seven points of damage. And Corky Scratch is unconscious. Fuck. Which one is unconscious? That one. Is there so any sheets? The rest smaller? of his movements to go. Yeah, I wish our sheet was smaller. So you I mean, can adjust them like somewhat. Because, like, with the party inventory, it'll show you our health bars and shit. Like, the party's health bars. Mm hmm. And he's going to move there, and this is the end of his turn. Don't let the hmm. most powerful combatant on the field solo the sorcerer. Good. Belgoris, you're up. Yup. All right. Uh, how bad is that uh, bandit-looking, uh, the, 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 the pirate lieutenant? So if I had to say on a scale of 1 to 65, I'd give it a 2. Oh, I also noticed you put extra attack on my my character sheet. I don't think I have that yet. Mm -hmm. Do not? Not yet. I shouldn't. I think you get that. Yeah, you no, know, you get it at level 5 Paladin. I'm not level it 5 is Paladin. Level five. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah, you don't get that. My mistake. Yep. Neat. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's try and get this guy out of here. Got out of here. Uh, I'm not going to waste any more Paladin spells on him. I am going to... Flailing. Yep, good old Flail. Repent. He <laughs> just shouts repent as he hits him with a Flail. Repent. 24. Natural 18. Ooh. Why did everyone choose? Yeah, he is very dead. If you'd like to describe where the flail knocks him down, you're welcome. Oh, Balgoris doesn't kill. You watch as Balgoris. You watch as he swing. <laughs> you watch as he just holds his flail, his shield up, starts whipping the flail around, and knocks him straight upside the head. And you just watch as he just crumples like a a doll with his strings cut. Okay, you're telling me somebody who weighs as much as your character does and all that is swinging a flail around ain't gonna crush somebody's skull? If he, doesn't doesn't try if he tells me it's non-lethal damage, it's non-lethal damage according to D and D. Fair He's enough. Not just. He is indeed. I... You have your movement still and your bonus action. Let's see. I don't think there's much I can do with a bonus action. Well, I guess there is. Uh. I wish it You're was not going to try action. that first combat, are you? And, uh, nah. Might have to. You could. He's incapacitated. 
Everybody would see it. So no. Everybody would see it. Everyone witnessed this. So Balgoris is going to You can move yourself. Yeah, I'm trying. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. Wow. Need to get our damage back up. Of course, runs over to Quirky Scratch. I'll allow that breath. Another movement. Yep, that was 25. Oh, yep. yeah, the bear is in the way. Yeah. My bad. I'm, I'm allowing it because it's... How did you uh... forget about the bear? It's a fucking bear! <laughs> I forgot about the bear! Hey, sometimes <laughs> you just forget things. I need, like, bear sound effects. On just give me one second. I need to see if this is a... I've got a T-Rex sound effect. It is we do have that, oh, but never mind. Not Can't quite, do that. Not, not the quite the same. Can't do that either. Okay. I could do this. I was gonna kick out of how my something like, secret happens. Country, so it looks like I have lipstick on for some fucking reason. Exile. You select them. Yeah, I, it's not something we have coded quite well. Oh, I thought you were gonna use lay on hands. No, that's not a bonus action. This other thing is. Let me just, uh, I should have made it correctly. No, no, it's coded correctly if you target them. Okay, if I, uh, well, it's going to pop up for everybody to see. That's why I didn't want it to happen. So everybody could see it. R remember, if you read the ability of it. They do know what you've done if you use that. Yeah, but she's unconscious right now. She won't know shit. Okay. Uh, um, it, Just mark off your use of it and uh -huh. mark off the point and I will do the roll. So it's 1d4 plus um, 3, I think. What's your wisdom again? Plus No, plus 4. 1d4 plus 4. Uh, Spellcasting ability. So that would be charisma. Yep. Yeah. That's five points. So, uh, Quirky Scratch, you wake up with five hit points. All right. You are prone. Gets back into the fight. I don't want to describe any further. Does that mean the guy that attacked her is visible again? The guy that attacked her was never invisible. He's right here. Oh, I've lost track of him mentally. By yep, he's right there. He was accidentally and invisible. Is, and but... Malgorz just pivots towards him, placing the shield in between him and Quirky Scratch, uh, Quirky oh. Scratch and the guy. Yep. And so, Roxby, it's your turn. All right. So, starting my turn, I'm gonna target myself, and I'm gonna use Cure Wound. Okay. As a level three spell. Ooh. You like? Just roll. Ooh, I see an eight. Give myself eight. Give myself eighteen points. points. Damn! That's, and you're as almost my, full. <laughs> and my bonus action will be healing word. To me, my green friend. As level two, and it's going to be on uh, Kirky. Kirky, oh. what is your bonus act? You cannot do that because cure wounds is a spell. You cannot. You can only cast a cantrip as a bonus. Oh, action. sorry. You're right. You can move your. In that you case, can move your spiritual weapon and use it to attack. But I'll give you the spell slot back. Sorry. What level did you want to cast? Did you cast that at? I casted it at two. I I already found it. Okay, you already fixed it. Okay. Yeah, but instead, then yeah, I'll just you know hammer, hammer move. Oh, whoops! Apparently, I crapped myself it. too. Yeah, you had both. It's all good. That's cool. All right, make an attack and against that guy with your hammer, then. Hammer. Make sure he's targeting the right person. He is. Attack. 15 hit. Uh, 15 does indeed hit. Barely barely hits, but does. Five points of Five damage. Points. Taking your first chunk out of him. And for that, I'm going to also... You have your movement left. That's all. Yeah. I'm just wondering why I'm like technically selecting both actors at the same time when I just want to select one. 
Because um, every time I try and drag I'm my... moving you again, because it shouldn't... It doesn't show you. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's cool. my little five foot step. That's you, you just go in there? That's it? Yeah. Okay. This guy... I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide this guy and move him out of the way, just because we don't want him there. Because another guy runs up and stands over his dead body and attacks you. Lauren. The scimitar. <laughs> Natural four. No one can hit Torrent. It's funny. That's the biggest turn. fucking target is just ricocheting he everything. No, maybe. I guess they're still just a little thrown off by it. He didn't exist before. Is he a real thing or a ghost? <laughs> Uh, and that is a miss with a... F at least that time, it was a 15 and just barely missed. So at least I, f I have some confidence that they can try. Uh, it is now Lotus, the brown bear's turn. And after watching what happened to Quirky Scratch, she's going to take a 180. And is going to... What's this more damage? Air attack. Going to try and bite it. For a definite hit with a 22... Six points of damage total as she takes a chunk out of the lizard folk. Zana's um. turn. She's gonna put down this motherfucker. This hit. Ooh, near max damage. And that guy's still up. Six. All right. That's that turn. She doesn't get a multi-attack yet. Herbius. I moved down here. Uh, okay. I'm guessing the guy between me and Torin is a... Uh, you can attack him in advantage without having to use a reckless attack, yes. Yeah. You're flanking. Or just keep reckless attack. Just murder him. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Twenty-three. Never give. Twenty-three definitely gets full damage <laughs> without reckless attack. They just start tearing shit. Apart. Eleven damage. He had eleven hit points. So please describe how you murdered this guy. Because <laughs> why not? You're getting so many kills. As the man's attacking Torn from the front, I walk up behind him as he doesn't know it, and I take my entire blade, swing it back, and fucking. Run him through with the blade as it pops out his chest, and he I'm looks down. Four feet and just out of fucking chest. screeches as he falls on the ground as I pull it back out. Yep, with what little air is left in his lungs. Um, well done. You've got you to don't know what a man your second attack sounds like. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you got another person in melee range for your second attack. Uh. Would that be an advantage? Or if would I have to move down? Attack, would be. What if I move down 10 feet? Five. That would make it an advantage. Five or 10. Yeah. No, 10, ten feet. Ten, it's got to be yeah. the diagonal. We. Just fucking uh, running him around. <laughs> and then for another 10 feet. Then another 10 feet. Another 10 feet, yeah. Take your attack. About to fuck these guys up. Seeing some good tactical plays here. A two and a three. And it Oops. still hits. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, it still hits? Wait, how? It's a two, plus three. Two and three. So it's three plus I rolled three. a twelve. Well, somehow you oh. hit. So I rolled damage. I must have misread one of them. Your dice oh, are hard to read. Doing D &D. E. That was an another twelve damage. Yeah, damage. Uh, that guy's also dead. <laughs> I'm just committing murder. You are just committing <laughs> mass murder. <laughs> murder. Um, you will do it again. I think you're out of movement now. I I I am out of movement. Actually, okay. I'm not out of movement, but I am out of action. Okay, quirky scratch. Make ready we, uh, your turn calls. It's so fucking cool. Stand up. <laughs> hey you Tristan, stand up. you want to check we're, your we're gonna jump back because we're doing other stuff? But Exile, you look exactly yeah. how I thought you would. 
You've seen me yeah, before? Pretty much. No, I haven't. Really? Surprise. The only one I know is Tristan in here. Because I remember you last time you saw my face, you said the exact same Goku? thing. No, I don't think I've ever really played anything with Goku. Hi, my name's no. Goku. No armor. Oh, Hi, gentlemen. Huh? Who's, who's yeah. this? But, Which bull? Nico. Oh my god. <laughs> Definite hit, roll damage. Hey, Tristan, I'm going to send you a DM uh, regarding something that uh, me and Lags were talking about. Oh, holy fuck, yes. <laughs> 24 points of damage. Nicely done. Vengeance. Yeah, At he's what got... level? Okay. <laughs> he just cast a level 3 Witch Bolt and rolled near max damage. That's what happened. Quirky what Scratch is the Senate. <laughs> no, he, he actually <laughs> rolled pretty shit. 3d12. Well, That's he rolled two thirds. Two thirds damage, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Don't worry, Still pretty up. good. Or sorry, he rolled one pretty shit at least. My bad, English. Anyways. Um, I am going to so since you know my Minotaur brother over here just has been absolutely wrecking fucking house. But you're on like the mob enemies down there. <laughs> I mean, still. Yes, you're the big crack of fucking white mega bothers. I fucking can't just went fucking full. I'm gonna fuck your day up. Yeah, I mean, he knocked you down in one round and you just took half his health with another 12 third. Well, that is barely, that just hits. <sighs> Give him an old poke. Five. So half his health, okay. and I'll take another swing at him. He isn't, she isn't dead yet. That's a That's good one. That's gonna hit with a 17. Roll damage. That is probably death. Yes, that is very dead. As I, we... I take my glaive from the top of their right shoulder and swing it down to the left side of their lower arm, right armpit, I cleaving clean through their upper half. Ooh, I like it. Um, you got your movement and your bonus action. If you want to just go full fighter mode and action search right now. Didn't I already? I don't nope. recall you doing that. Alright, in that I case, I will, I will use my movement over... You will get an opportunity attack against you if you leave this guy's AO, see if this guy's alive. Yeah, I'm just gonna move in, like directly in front. Er, er, yeah, and then I am going to use this arming attack on him. Okay. Oh, let, whoa. let me make sure I target the right guy. Uh, strength saving throw. Strength saving throw. What's the DC? Well, he he got a nineteen. Probably survived it. Let me let me let me check that. Um, if it doesn't say, then it's going to be eight plus your level plus or plus your proficiency bonus plus your strength mod. It's going to be what? Eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your strength mod, which you have a plus four to strength, right? So plus seven, so it's going to be a fifteen. Yeah. So it succeeds. So, so a, an that. attempted you, an attempted shot at macking it out of his fucking grip doesn't You do have work. to make the actual attack and hit before you can do the disarming attack. You have to make a regular attack. Oh. So I can still make my regular two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your disarming attack failed in either case, because I don't think you're going to miss it. Actually, you did miss him. Mostly because you didn't targeted, but you also missed. Now does, my dis now, does my disarming attack count as one of my attacks? I... So a disarming attack is something you do as part of your attack. It's a okay. Battle. So you used a superiority so... die, but you... Or rather, I'm going to say you didn't use a superiority die because you didn't hit. 
Uh, no, every time, every attempt, every every time I attempt that, I use my hot. Yeah, but it's I'm gonna count it as you didn't attempt it because we okay. did it in the wrong order. All right. So select uh, them again and make another attack. So you don't have them selected anymore. There's a hit. Gonna do a regular roll. Eight, seven points Zero. of damage certainly helps. All right, and I think you're out of like everything. Yes, sir. Uh, dead. Dead, 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 live. Yep, this one is which one? Oh, it's the one right across from you, Torrent. He's gonna hit right back. Attempt to. 16 or higher. Natural six for a ten, miss. And the last one is gonna attempt to attack uh, Susanna again, and we're gonna see how well that goes. And it fails because he rolled a natural four. I swear these enemies are not rolling well today. Except for your good characters. Uh. Very special, yes, so fishy. This guy is Hi. unconscious. Um, he's gonna make a death save. Or no, because you did non-lethal, so yeah, he's fine. No, yeah, he's just unconscious. For reasons. Yeah. So this is uh, up, and he's looking at the situation like, what the fuck? Um, and he's... Don't get an opportunity to attack with a spiritual weapon, so he's going to actually go and move to engage Belgoris. Uh... What about the bear? He's ignoring the bear for the moment and attacking the thing with two legs. Oh, I guess, yeah, he's just doing a five-foot adjustment. Cool. That's a hit with a dirty 20. On his first attack, and that is only eight points of damage to you, Belgoris. Second attack is going to be a shield bash. And that's a hit with an 18. Uh, I need you to make... Maybe if I select you, I can do it. Yes, I can do it that way. Okay. Uh, you succeed on the save, so you do not get subjected to the... To the uh, getting knocked prone, but you do still take the damage. So five more points of damage there. And finally, oh. he's going to try and bite you. Natural 19 for 26. That's definitely going to hit. Uh -huh. uh, and rolled minimum damage, so another five points. Okay. And that is his turn. He's not going to live long. My turn? No, not yet. Uh, Belgoris isn't hurting. Oh, sorry, bad. Belgoris. My bad. No, Belgoris is okay for the moment. Just one second. Uh. Uh. Oh, fuck it. It does more damage. Angry uh, he'll probably dodge it. Never mind. He's got decent stats. I'll feed him tomorrow. What's going on? What did I miss? Nothing. Nothing yet. Okay. Alright, we're just gonna go with another... Uh... I got one more Paladin spell. He might... He might fail. Alright. Command. Go ahead, retreat, Tristan. Command. Okay. Unslisk. Grovel. Uh, he falls to his knees and begins to grovel. Roll the natural two. Was, I don't have a thing for that, so I'm going to say he's prone. Yeah, well, yeah, it's uh, grovel is prone. Yep. All right. The grovel at my feet. And that is your turn, I believe, unless you're going to do something else. No, that was the action. Okay. I have no bonus actions to use. Fox me. Starting my turn, I have a question. Yes. I'm going to start with my bonus action of moving my hammer here. Mm -hmm. If I attack him, does that give me advantage? Because it's a flank. No, you need to be directly opposite. If you go this tile, you get advantage, though. And, so mean, my hammer is not getting advantage with uh Yeah, that's a murder sandwich. Of course. So Val I 
I can't remember if spiritual weapon is supposed to do that. Yes, your hammer would do that. I thought you were talking about you making an attack. So yes, your hammer does attack at advantage. Now choose your attack okay. well, because if my command will break the second he is hurt. But he still needs I hurt the so enemy? turn to stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you get advantage because he's prone anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, mm. either way, um, let me just summon the spiritual weapon attack. It will not break and... until he is hurt. He still has and to take an action advantage. to stand up. Well, half his movement is on action, but yes, that's a Does hit. Is that hit? Damage. Yep. Hit. He, he doesn't have a particularly high... Wait, you attacked your spiritual weapon with your spiritual weapon. Oh, whoops. Mm. Well, uh, 16 well, wouldn't still damage. hit him, though, so I'll apply the 5 damage to him. But Okay, my bad. And just to make sure that I have him targeted this time again proper... Okay. I'm going to uh, select yeah, myself. And I'm going to toll the dead on him. Okay. He, uh, yep. So he has to six or fourteen wisdom. And as a fail, click the other damage. formula. Sorry. Uh, click damage. Click damage. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, no, no. One, one d twelve necrotic. Holy shit. Yeah, two d twelve in this context. Nine points of damage. Um, he is no longer groveling, but he is still prone. Oh, what does Necrotic do again? If you get killed I'm rotting with Necrotic him. damage, you cannot be resurrected. Okay. I'm rotting him away. Yeah, Necrotic damage is like evil dark magic movie damage. He's kind of getting pummeled right now. It and... is now the bear's turn. Yeah. Uh, it's going to make a claw attack. With the 19, that is a definite hit. Oh. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. Points of damage, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's looking really rough. If would have saved him for last, he wouldn't have broke the command. <laughs> Just saying. I didn't even roll with advantage, it hit, but... I left him there for a minute while pulling everybody else in that position, everybody. Susanna's getting real fed up with this guy still being alive. Oh, sorry, bad has. Where he... Where he's rear at once, glad. After that... Well, we'll see who gets the blood first. She's going to make another attack with her rapier. For 14 for 25, that definitely hits. Seven points of damage, which I think is enough for you. Yep. And they are the this final bugbear also crumples. They should have been on the right side of history. <laughs> Sure, sure. Um, and she is going to then take her full movement to get around back of this one. Why did you? I hope she has multi attack. She went there, there, there. So I gotta prepare some more long leaf. Turbius, you're up. I'm gonna make this person invisible. Not invisible. I'm just gonna hide them so you can stand there if you want. I know, but I wouldn't have advantage. Well, you have a reckless attack option, and it's just another bugbear. Yeah. You just move the bodies out of the way and stand over them. I actually just turned them not visible for the moment. Five, ten. I will attack that one. Reckless? Or normal? Normal. Twenty-one. Definitely hits. Roll damage. Twelve, 12. Points of damage. Uh, he is still standing, though only somewhat. You have a second attack. Mit acts of atrocities. Acts atrocities. That's a eleven. But it went for an eighteen, so that's a hit. Yeah. That's a murder. That is a murder. That's and that's a murder. Points, he falls. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will then move. Not target myself. Move. Uh, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
35. I will move there. You move there? Okay. Well, you've moved there. All right. Quirky scratch, it is this, your turn. This is about to get really mean really quick. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'm gonna go back up. Oh. He is prone, so you have advantage on melee attacks and disadvantage on ranged attacks. So if you want to walk up and try and claw the fucker, I wouldn't judge you at all. Nah. So, so, so I was I just might do that when he can just freely, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Power. <laughs> Unlimited. Yeah. Power. All right, so how do you want to describe cooking this motherfucker? Uh, I'm going to. The worst part is, is I'm pretty sure I posted that gif in here before. From oh, the last wow. time we played. Not in this one, but... I'm going to delete all of these. Combat is concluded, and I'm going to de-wild shape. I, I definitely didn't just commit acts of genocide in a drive-by. <laughs> Oh no, it's dark. <laughs> oh no, all the torches are out. <laughs> a around this time, though, however, the sun has finally begun to rise over the horizon. I see things again. <laughs> it's not my dark rage, anymore. My rage is now deactivated. Zana kind of just walks up, looks around, takes one look at the guy on the ground, it's and shoots him in the face. Oh, thank right. you. Right. Oh. How do I de summon my spirit? 11 weapon? points of damage as this guy. Very oh, much. I wanted to do something there, Exile, but okay. G does not take. It looks at you. I said no business. Well, I well, definitely uh, was not taken prisoner. <laughs> uh... No, you are not, and I admire that. You watch as she kind of walks over to the edge of the island and Since I'm saying watch fire. as she he launches a hand. She well, sort of in a, in a manner of light. Seven or uh, four. Uh, how many of it? I think it's four. It's four small orbs of light appear that she just makes kind of fly upwards in a vertical line, signaling the ship on the horizon as it drops yeah. sail and begins to slowly approach. Let me switch to some different music. We're going to wrap up here very shortly. Alright. Do we recover any loot from these guys? Alright. Start looking around. See if you can't find what we are try what we are seeking here. Or something else. You all have free movement. Sounds good to me. How do I get rid of my hammer? You all notice Balgoris take his cloak. That's part of his armor, and he visibly puts it up over his head. I'm so surrounded by killers. I'm just going to take the time to explore up over this way. I'm guessing you do not like killing. No, I do not. I know it is a necessary thing that we must engage in, but it is not something I truly like to do. I'm sorry, my storm blows are too vicious for you. This island. The sooner we get out of here, the better. And you notice Balgoris is... I hear screaming. ...physically <laughs> agitated. Is this... Hey, I found a boat! I believe I may have found it, Captain. You did find a, a boat. A, a rather boat? shitty-looking ship. Hey, yo, a boat. Look through this. Uh... Look at the house. Uh, well, Captain, in terms of loot, aside from this, obviously yours, is this going to be split up among the crew and us, or...? We'll have to take an assay, we'll have to take an assay of what we have here, and then we'll decide. Understood. May I do investigation on the boat? Percy uh, Sir Schwartz for? over to Balgoras. I, uh, post guard at the staff. You, so you notice a large backpack sitting crew. on the ground. Which you should be able to double click on and see what it contains. Backpack. That was my investigation on the boat. Um, what are you looking for? 
any potential loot. Potential Looking over the ship, loot. it is... It is in a sorry state. This boat is barely being held together in a lot of places. It's clearly seen some poorly repaired battle damage. As you go th looking through the hold, you find barely anything, really. It is a destitute vessel that is certainly... <laughs> should have sunk probably a while ago. Bless you. Thank you. you. So what did you guys find in the bag? Where's Hello. the bag? Yes, what? mademoiselle. What do you require? May I ask what exactly oh. you did earlier in the battle? If you can talk about it. It was a simple healing. Nothing more. Arish. Nothing less. Oh, he's still in the boat. I forgot about him. Let us see what's in this pack. And Balgors opens the backpack. Okay. If you double click on it, you should be able to see it. Yeah. Yep. There's a letter in here. You can drag these items directly into your inventory and divide them as you wish. All right. Listen, everyone is here. I see nothing Good. I want. As we have a musket here. One of those newfangled firearms. A couple of pistols. A grenade. A, an iron ball of some kind. I'm not sure. Does anyone else have firearms familiarity? Dirty scratch holes of her fingers and arts of lightning are still crackling. I know all her fingers. Uh, sorry, we left. Sorry, but uh, sorry, I don't. Did you just fire witch bolt into the guy again? <laughs> well, if you just hear crackling that, in the distance. If that is the case, I will take the musket and about half the shot if no one else okay. protests. Yeah, you should just be able to drag it directly into your inventory. This is a test. Yep, there you go. I take the spyglass and look at into it the wrong way at uh <laughs> at Balgoris and he looks really small to me. It does look really small to you. <laughs> what is this? You should flip it funny... around, Minotaur. What is this funny eye thing? It, does it makes things glass. smaller. Flip it around. I flip it around. <laughs> I proceed to look back at Balgoris. Ah! Now you large, what is this? It is look for looking at things over the long distances. Usually used on vessels or sometimes used on campaigns. Oh, sorry, the I didn't mean to do that to you, Thorin. Thorin is just taking everything. No, I'm just taking what I want. Fair enough. I'm leaving, I'm leaving plenty for everybody else. We got some healing potions. <laughs> Couple of spell scrolls. I'm not. I'm not taking any. Nico, are you saying you took the um spyglass? Yeah. Okay. Are manacles like uh, things for detainment? Well, if you click on the item, you should be able to see it. Uh, do restraint. we want to split currency five way? I will take. I will take the restraints. I would say yeah. It makes a sense to split it always. I don't know who it's gonna split across. I don't either. Who just got money? I uh, Not I don't know. I don't US know. got some money. Belgoris did not. Belgoris I did, did not. not. I I have enough I money. Think, I don't think I did. You, you also but I don't know. Roxby got a lot of money. I may have yeah, gotten I, a lot of money. I don't know. Money. I think I did get money. Yeah, Lotus got money too. Or no, Lotus didn't get money. Roxby, can you use the catapult spell scroll? Look into so it. how, just so you guys know, how I run spell scrolls is, you can, you anyone who has magical capability can use a spell scroll. You don't have to have it from your class. Is it a one-time use? It is. Okay. Might be useful. Let's see if we can give it to our custom. I'll take that. Hey, what about the pistols? Does anyone want them? Unfortunately, I think you might be our only one who is proficient with using such types of firearms. Oh, uncivilized. Well, in that case, I will take a single pistol and the rest of the shot. We can sell the rest of the pistols for money. I agree. 
So uncivilized. Surprised no one's looked at the feather token yet. Does anyone use? The I read iron? it, but I'm not sure on this use. Will myself. anyone be using the iron nails? So those can actually be used to seal a door. If not, I have, ha I have a hammer. I have a sledgehammer and other items we can use for carpentry. If I had a hammer. I guess. Uh. I don't know. I'll take some of those nails myself, and if you'd like there, Thorid, you can take the rest there, yeah? Lars is gonna grab a healing One push. of us should take the lantern, and it'll make easier seeing at night, seeing as how we are working for this gentleman for the foreseeable future, <laughs> and most of the attack seems to be at night. I um, have, 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 a, lan I have a lantern there. myself. If you would like it, you can take it. I am not in need of a lantern. Uh, Lotus took the lantern. I'll hold on to the antitoxin for others. If no one needs a spare backpack, we should leave the pistols in there and uh, throw it in the party. And Lotus also grabbed a pistol. I agree. Oh, Lo does Lotus need a shot? She just is curious about it. Okay. There's one more if someone else wants it. I'll take so it just for now. It. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then there's backpack. You can leave that behind. That just represents the container. Okay. You all watch as Balgoris kind of slinks off and goes to inspect the battlefield. You're looking for the crabs. Sure. All here. Is anyone around? No. <clears throat> All right. No, I do not. Time to go and do a little bit more exploring. Do 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 do. Let's see if we can go find that main lady. Ah, she's over here. Yo, lady. It's, I've already got it. She would look as she's got a large chest under her left arm. Yeah, there's something else you might find. Found a document. I like okay. hand it over to. Them. Oh, I can just do that. Read Apparently, it. that handed the document to them. Okay. I wouldn't have given it to her, but okay. Is there hmm. a door there? I mean, they're my boss. They're the person my boss told me to listen to. So. I can't walk through the wall. Space. Boss says there's a trade junk selling for Castor with no escort. Didn't say much else besides he'll be hugging the leeward chain to avoid the northern cruise. Oh, there's the door. Take chances when you can. Don't hold it short again. Boss ain't gonna be forgiving. Be there 27th, but intercepts not doing 14th the 3rd. So you're gonna have to have time out before you run. Huh. Well, that just that simply tells me that these people are better informed than I expected. Thank you, though. They have it. <clears throat> okay, firm. I didn't know. Here. Oh, really? As you and I don't have a model for it because I just didn't bother. As you watch the uh, ship that you all arrived on begins kind of pulling up just offshore, and several of the other crew members oh. up aboard to begin kind of just inspecting what's going on. Mind if I go in there and uh, investigate the girls? There's. Quite a few running around there. Huh? Sorry about that. Got all the blood on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna DM you because I can't. I don't actually know how to whisper to random people with this specifically right now. Or. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Anything of note in here? No, nothing in particular, no. I, I gave you all the loot that I was going to give you here. Shit. So I'm letting Belgorz do his thing here real quick. What are you... What are you? Honestly, don't even bother with those. You, you can... You can... You can get them. Well, you can't hit yourself with it. 
But yeah, you, let's say I... you find three. Okay. Everyone starts gathering around, Susanna says as she heads over to this side of the island. <laughs> Ogos, where's your blue friend? Yeah. Not his babysitter. Yeah, and that does count for uh, three war. Mm -hmm. Took care of it. That's what I was doing. Okay. I did not know. Come over, Balgoris, over here. Mm. Uh, Damn, what a leap. My apologies. Look, I, so you all did the fair I had to take a long? time to say a prayer for the dead. Okay. Well, I'd say you've all done a pretty good job here, so uh, maybe a little reward for you as she... Turn, turns to face the crowd and tosses a looks to be a some sort of flying object straight to you. I reach out and catch it. You have a brief moment to look at this small rock that she's thrown to you before you see the magical glyph engraved upon it shatter, and you all find yourself suspended about ten feet off the ground as this cage instantly forms around you. These translucent sort of purple bars about an inch space between them, you know, hold you all aloft. You did do a pretty good job, but quite frankly, can't have anyone following us back home after this. Best of luck. You've all been trapped in a force cave spell. You well, that's not you. very nice. What are you talking about? We said we would let you go. We did not tell you when or where. Please. Wait, that was our task, was to quite literally just do that. Actually, I'm pretty sure going. he literally did say that when we were done, he'd let us off, but... Indeed, I have let you off. You are, you are removed from your contract. She chuckles and turns invisible. Just fucks off. Watch out for that bush. Will. She so that's watches... She, I, she does, let's cage. get rid of... Yeah. Um, and you watch... His, Eventually, she does turn visible again. She goes through the water just for this. It was for dramatic effect. And she climbs aboard with the chest. And, the sh and you watch over the next few minutes as the ship becomes a smaller and smaller dot on the horizon. Starts playing the bagpipes. Well. Can you play the bagpipes? Okay. Um, not very well. Well, yeah. I would say. We I'm too are... distracted by staring off at the distance. Well, Before I would the say... ship leaves, however. You do watch as it slings, swings around and fires a full broadside into the pirate vessel for you. As it, as the as the forward mast collapses and the vessel begins to sink slowly at its moorings. Resume what you were talking. I mean, unless we're still in this case, not long, long, long ago. Beware of a woman with pretty features. They are always the most treacherous. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should be more. Do well, it seems like we might have enough wood on here to take a frame from that ship and maybe lay down a new one. We don't have any maps nor any sextants. That's fine. How long will this take us? Yeah, well, you got to figure that out. Either, well, first either... we gotta get out of this cage. We don't I have, have any, any a slight magic experience breakers. with woodworking. I can assist this best to my ability as well. Maybe more finishing cuts. I'm not well versed with the more. We're still yeah, second mechanic. We're still oh, yeah, we're the still stuck. Case, yes. That's uh, a oh, force well then. Oh, I, 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 but they let it be known. If we ever find her again, 
She That's will fish. be brought to justice. Now, is that really what you prefer? <sighs> to watch the curious sight is an individual, apparently having been laying in the water this whole time, stands up. The short fit art fellow, maybe about three and a half feet tall. So throws How long have you been hanging around there, friend? He watches a cobalt, of all things, steps out from um, the shadows and drops this gray, oh. long cloak with two kind of separate tails off his head. Long enough. Oh, sorry, long enough. I, uh, well, you did kind of royally fuck up my plan here, but um, perhaps we'll have an alternative. Are you another lord of that island? Oh, yeah, no. Fuck no. So... I'm really kind of impressed you man you fools managed to actually find yourself working for that motherfucker, but you should have seen this coming. I mean, come on. So I mean Yes, we did kinda of see it, but uh, what was the alternative guy? Probably Can you slave hint? Well, turns out it is your lucky day, because Ciro's here to help you out. And well, we got to get the fuck out of here pretty quick until, before Pretty Lady realizes that box is empty. You watch as he reaches into his cloak and pulls out a wrapped package in his hands. Stole away on that ship for a couple of weeks. I was hoping to just catch a, catch a ride with them back to port, but uh, looks like we're going to have bigger fish to fry. I'm going to go try and stop this motherfucker from sinking for the next 40 minutes or so while you get your ass out of there. Join me when you can. And we're actually going to call that session here for today. Join better, better. As you have met a individual who you can probably trust. It's... Okay. <sighs> All right. Whoa, that was a long session, but I knew it was going to be long with the first one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like all things, everything must come to an end. I bid you all a good rest of your weekend and a good Sunday. That's Longshot, signing off.